Hello, everyone, and welcome to the third episode of Campaign 3. That's 3-3 three, three of Speedrunners and Dragons. My name is Adef, and I'll be your Dungeon Master tonight. Campaign 3 airs live on twitch.tv slash Adef every other Monday night at 5 p.m. Eastern. And will feature returning faces, thrilling action, and stunning twists. Have you come to expect anything less from Speedrunners and Dragons? Joining us for Campaign 3, of course... We have Kung Fu Fruit Cup, Patty, The Blacktastic, Dangers, and Daniel B. Daniel B, he ate enough food at the airport. He ate enough gnocchi, lasagna, fettuccine. They finally let me leave. They said, they said, all right, that's enough pasta. You can legally depart the premises. And uh, we got him back. So we, we've, we've rescued Danny. The Operation Danny Eats Pasta was a success. Um, we got our boy back. But uh, how are we feeling, gamers? How feeling are the great. Are you feeling? feeling? Is he like you? Yes. A little squishy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Well, uh, I'm going to head straight into the recap here. Uh, so let's get started. Last time on Speedrunners and Dragons. As our party approached a heavily bleeding Justin, a menacing, handsome, and very annoying stranger named Quick revealed himself and announced that he was being paid to prevent people from following after the killer at the scene of the crime. After showing that his brink clearly allowed him dead on aim with his six-shooter by killing an innocent pigeon, he fled. Meanwhile, Rusty had shown off his brink, Flowers for Algernon, by swapping consciousness with another bird and scouting the area. Also, Polly Lasagna passed out. Our heroes managed to reach Jameson for help, and medical assistance arrived post-haste for Justin and Polly. When our heroes returned to B Division in the Infernatech headquarters, Lexi had stepped away for a bit to upgrade her robot, Max, who now stands as tall as an average dude. After meeting back up, Jameson gave each of our heroes a brink awakening in the combat test chamber and taught them of the origin of the bracelets and more about the Mysterious Eight, the group of brink... They're not called the Mysterious Eight. That's a fun adjective I just added, to be clear. I don't want to, like, the lore nerds. I don't want them to get all, you know... I respect the lore nerds. I am one. More about the eight, the group of Brink users trained by Steven to prevent calamity on Earth. Jameson then sent our gamers to meet Will, a young hedge fund manager and another member of the eight, to learn more about the killer. With eyes and ears all over the city, Will was able to shine light on some of the killer's tactics and habits. Everyone up to this point who has heard about Quick has confirmed he is the worst. Will then sent the team out, along with Ryan, to check on a supposed Brink event that had taken place in Brooklyn. Upon arriving at the scene of the event, an abandoned warehouse near the bay, our heroes snuck up the fire escape and looked through the rafters to see a hostage in an office and some kind of machinery being worked on. While sneaking around, Rusty discovered that the hostage they had seen through the rafters of the abandoned warehouse is none other than our very own Polly L. Welcome to Episode 3 of Campaign 3 of Speedrunners and Dragons. Okay, so first we're gonna rewind the clocks. Whoop, 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 whoop. And we're back. We're back with Polly. All right. Polly yep. has fallen unconscious. He's carted away in a sort of ambulance type vehicle. And, you know, Polly, uh, uh, you dream of wonderful foods. You dream of, of, of delightful lasagnas and, and, and gnocchis. And, you know, the pastas I mentioned that you had to eat at the airport, you, you, you imagine them in, in your dreams. It's a very delightful, nice, and calming dream. Yeah, it's like, uh, like Mario in Super Mario 64. I just start saying it in my sleep. Fettuccine. Yeah, exactly. Lasagna. Exactly. Uh, and, you know, it's weird when you say lasagna because that's just your name. Um, no but, relation. Yeah, right. No relation. <laughs> <laughs> no relation. Uh, I love that. <laughs> As if it's like a guy. Um, you awake in the B Division medical bay. Um, and uh, there are some doctors that have been uh, attending to you. And they uh, seem to have patched you up real good. You know, nothing was really wrong, but, uh, you know, you had just fainted. But they have um, uh, people with, like, brinks that can do medical work. Uh, and they, you, you feel right as rain. Um, you feel, well, in fact, When I open better. my eyes, I bolt out of bed and I ask, what happened to the guy with the gun? Uh, and uh, the nurse is like, uh, I don't, what? The, the guy with the gun. He was right there. How'd I get back here? Was I shot? Uh, uh, they just bring the guys in for me to, like, treat them. I don't know what happened. I'm going to get the doctor. Uh, and the guy, like, runs out. He's, like, frightened of you. 
Um, and he gets the doctor and the doctor comes in and uh, it's this very like stately looking guy. Uh, and he's got glasses um, and, a, and a goatee and a clipboard and a long white coat and some scrubs underneath. And he's like, oh, uh, Mr. Lasagna, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to have you in the bed. How you feeling? I mean, I'm feeling okay considering I might have just been shot. What happened? Oh, no, no, no. We scoured your body for bullet wounds, assuming the same. Uh, seems like you just passed out, so. Mm, no, no. Paulie Lasagna does not faint, okay? This is not what happens. All right, look, Mr. Lasagna, I don't know what to tell you. If you're sure you don't faint, then there might be an underlying condition you might want to check with your general practitioner about that could be, you know, uh, some kind of issue with iron deficiency. Or That's not what we're here for. Uh, regardless, your friends are safe, uh, and they've been instructed by Jameson to go meet with a, uh, a colleague in the city. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so, you know. Oh, right. Uh, I'm supposed to uh, tell you to meet with Dr. Rell. Uh, in uh, whenever you were awake to go to the, the testing chamber and meet with Dr. Rell. You're already a doctor. Why do I need another one? Uh, well, I there's different kinds of doctors. Uh, so, like, I'm a doctor of medicine, an MD. Someone tried to explain this to me She's a doctor time. of philosophy, PhD. Uh, it's two different things. So, like, I went to Harvard Medical School. She went somewhere else for something else. Okay. Yeah, whatever. Where do I find Rell? Yeah, all right. This has been a delightful conversation. Thanks. Um, uh, you just walk out of this room, turn left, walk about 30 paces, and then turn right. Could you write that down? Just walk. <laughs> um, and uh, he he ushers you out, uh, and, uh, you know, you're, you're able to <laughs> easily make it um, to uh, uh, this sort of test chamber area where evidently the others were uh, uh, that you don't know that uh, the, uh, earlier today. And uh, Dr. Rell, who's the sort of like, you know, straight brunette hair, uh, the more serious of the two scientists that you met. There was Dr. Sam and Dr. Rell. Uh, and Dr. Rell is sort of the more like brass tacks, uh, one of the two. Um, and she, uh, she says, um, she says, uh, Polly, welcome. How are you I, feeling? Uh, I'm fine. Thank you. Okay, How are you great. feeling? Uh, I'm feeling fine, thanks. Um, your uh, your compatriots uh, are meeting with a business associate of ours, uh, but in the meantime, um, I'm curious uh, if you got a look at the killer yourself. Uh, no, all I saw was a blur. Okay. Um, yeah, well, you know, we're trying to gather as much info as we can, so uh, if you do think about, uh, or if you do remember something pivotal, you know, please do share it with me. Um, Oh, right. And she goes to the wall, you know, presses some buttons and <laughs> a like thing comes out with the bracelet and she picks one up and gives it to you. Um, and she says, uh, I'm not uh, Brink sensitive, so I can't. Well, I'm Brink sensitive, but not Brink capable. Uh, so I won't be able to activate your Brink energy, but at the very least, you should take the bracelet with you uh, uh, just in case. But, um, you Where know, I, 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 well, I don't have any assignment for you, but, uh, you know, you're welcome to stick around here or whatever you want to do. Okay. Does it matter which hand I put it on? Uh, dominant hand or non-dominant, doesn't matter. All right. Polly slips it over his left wrist. Okay. She says, uh, I think you had family in town. You could maybe go see them if you'd like. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go see them right now. Thank you. Sure. And he just runs out the room. Okay. Um, you're able to quickly make it uh, uh, out of the... Uh, um, the B division, the like basement takes you up to the, you know, the storefront uh, in underneath Infernatech, uh, and then you, you know, go out. And where was we had data? There was data. I have data on where the restaurant is. Um, do you remember where Lasagna's was? Uh, I think, I think the the family lives in Astoria, but the restaurants in Little Italy. Okay, great. So uh, it is, uh, it's a weekday and it's like, you know, afternoon, uh, early afternoon. So you gather that the family's probably working. Yeah. Um, uh, so a trip to Little Italy, which is what, in south, southern Manhattan, like downtown? Yeah. Um, so yeah, you'll take some manner of train southbound. <laughs> and whether it be the one or the two or, you know, something like that, uh, you'll, you'll take that southbound and... Uh, the the train ride feels very uneventful you're very you know you're anxious to see your family 
Um, uh, a While lot I'm waiting has on the train, can I, yeah. can I like fiddle with the bracelet and see yeah, what sure. happens? Um, I... uh, yeah, you, you can turn the, uh, turn the mechanism, um, and you feel some brink energy, like untapped brink energy flowing out of you, but you're not sure how to harness it. You okay. feel like you're maybe missing something. Cool. Um, and the train ride is, you know, fairly uneventful, just anxious to see the fam. Uh, anxious to have some of that fine home cooking. It's been too long. It's been like three days. My God, you almost got killed like five times. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, so you exit the station. Um, you exit the platform. And uh, you walk out into sunny downtown Manhattan. And you're about... The station is about two blocks from the family restaurant. Um, and could you roll perception for me, please? Yeah. Seven. Okay. Uh, it's a beautiful day, and the sun is shining. There are cars driving by. That's you think you I might hear know. like a you know like a siren in the distance or something, but uh, uh, all's well. When do you not hear a siren in the distance? Exactly. Uh, but yeah, you know this neighborhood like the back of your hand, obviously. So you got no problem uh, uh, walking, you know, walking there. Yeah. Um, and uh, he do be he do I, be walking here. I'm walking here. <laughs> Um, and, uh, you, when you get within a block of the restaurant, uh, something starts to feel a little bit off. Um, uh, you just got this gut feeling that something's not right. Uh, but you chalk it up to, maybe you're hungry. You know what I mean? Something, you're hungry. I, and, uh, uh, am, do, is that all I think? Do I, do I feel No, 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 whatever you, man? however you feel Polly would react is how Polly would react. Okay. Uh, well, he's he's got street smarts. Not many other kinds of smarts, but street smarts. So he's gonna he's gonna stick his hands in his pocket and put the brass knuckles on in his pocket. Okay. Um, and you know, holding your hands in your pockets with the brass knuckles on, walking, you know, maybe a slightly hastened pace. Um, uh, you just sort of have this feeling like maybe you're you're either being watched or sort of out of game, you know, metaing for a second. Um, uh. In a campaign two sense, this is sort of like you feel resonant brink energy in the area, but you, Polly, don't know what that's really like yet. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, but Polly does, you know, Polly was just in a brink battle and has been in like uh, 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 New York too, so like he has some experience. You gather something brink ish is going on, um, and uh, once you're once you're within eye distance, you can see. Uh, uh, the the restaurant, um, you can see that the building next door is is on fire. Um, uh, so the the adjacent building is on fire. I am sprinting. Polly has a bit of a history with house fires, and he's running. Um, so you're you're huffing it, huffing it, huffing it, uh, and you skid to a stop in front of uh, uh, the uh, the burning building, and the firefighters are arriving on the scene, and they're you know they're getting ready to start you know. Uh, uh, you know, putting dousing the fire. Uh, can you roll uh, perception for me once more, please? That one. That building is on fire, motherfucker. There is fire coming out of this building. Um, uh, and uh, of course, your restaurant is near is directly to the left, and the sign is flipped to closed. Is does it seem like the flames are doing damage to the restaurant at all? It could. You're not really sure. Uh, uh, it definitely hasn't entered the building itself quite yet. Um, but uh, uh, certainly, you know, if they don't handle it quick enough, it could. Um, I, I look around to see if my family is like outside. I assume there's probably a crowd around. Um, you, Yeah, the crowd is gathering, you know, as it always does in Manhattan when there's a fire. Uh, and on the opposite side of the street, uh, you see your your mom and your dad uh, and a few of your siblings, and they're like, Ah, oh, Pauly, Pauly, Pauly! I, I run up to them. Guys, is everybody okay? What Pauly, happened here? Pauly, where in the name of lasagna you been? What have you been doing? I ain't seen you in like three days. I can't really explain it. Are, are the Frankies here? Uh, the two Frankies are notably absent. Okay. Have, have Frankie and Frankie been home? Are they okay? Uh, yeah, Frankie and Frankie were home. I, uh... 
I think they were... They were... They were here for a bit, but I swear to God, they went out to do an errand. I think uh, I think Frankie Frankie went out to do an errand for us uh, a little bit. It was to pick up the new... Uh, and then the the uh, your dad turns and is like, oh, it's to pick up the uh, the new dough. We needed new dough for some of these... Uh, I'm trying out this new recipe. And uh, Paul, you're going to die when I tell you about this. Uh, we're trying out this new recipe. And uh, and the wife's like, honey, shut, shut, shut your mouth. But the two of them were out. They were out, you know, taking care of business. Is there anything we need to get from the restaurant? Any valuables or anything that we need in case the worst happens here? Paulie, the men in red told us not to go in there. W what do they know? They're firefighters, Paulie. They, they fight fires. If anyone's going to know about fires, I assume it's the firefighters. I guess There's that's no their fire thing. in our building yet. Is there anything okay, in there that we need I don't to know. get? Does fire go? It goes, I assume. I don't know. I mean, I got jewels in there, sure. And we got, you know, I, 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 insurance papers. I don't know. Food. What is this stuff? I don't know. The, how are the firefighters doing? They look um, like they're, they're getting st stuff under control. Uh, sort of. It looks like it's going to be an active scene. And one of the firefighters walks up to you guys and is like, oh, excuse me. Uh, is this your, your building to the left? Yeah. Yeah, that's the family restaurant. Um, okay, uh, we'd like to ask you not to enter the premises for a little while uh, as we try to get the fire under control. Of course, it could spread. Um, I, I've been hearing a very heated argument about whether or not you should go inside, and I'm just here to step in to say definitively no. Uh, probably don't do that. Definitely don't do that. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, we're, we're doing the best we can. I'm going to get back to work. Can I help somehow? Uh, no. <laughs> we, we're, we're all, this is our job, so we're going to keep doing it. Uh, and he turns around and starts, you know, whatever. Um, and, uh, Polly, your dad suddenly taps you on the shoulder and your mom starts talking to the other kids. Um, uh, and they're like, where was Polly? Where was Polly? Um, and the mom's like, yes, 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 yes. Uh, but, um, the dad taps you on the shoulder and, uh, you turn and he points and he says, uh, he says, Polly, did you, uh, did you turn the sign to close when you just got here? No, it was like that when I arrived. I thought, I figured you guys did that to make sure no stupid customers went in there where the thing was on fire. No, 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 no. Family principle, you don't turn to sign to close unless we're closed, okay? And uh, just because there's a fire, you know, nobody in there, but like, you know, it's a, it's a business day, so we didn't turn, we just got, it, got the heck out of there. I mean, would you consider it open right now with nobody even allowed inside? That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that I didn't do that. Did you do that? I didn't do that. Who did? Okay. Well, then maybe there's somebody in that building. Maybe we should tell the firefighters that they got to go save somebody. Uh, they're busy. Paul, why don't you go check it out? Didn't you said they you wanted say, the help, right? They just said not to go in there. All right, but your mother's very trusting of members of authority, but I don't think we really... I, you just get in there. All right, if this is somebody in there fooling around, you know, whatever, yeah, we get in there. All right, fine. I, uh... He hands I, you the keys. I take a look to see if the firefighters are watching. Uh... You could reasonably sneak into the building. Plus, you know the building really well, um, and you're aware of like. Entrance? Uh, yes, there is. You'd have to go through an alley one block uh, uh, west. That's that's what I'm doing. Okay. Uh, you go west, and uh, just like Fivel, and then you go around the block, and you <laughs> you can't see Fu, but she is the only person that gave me any recognition for that joke. Uh, uh, so you um you go around the buildings. And uh, you turn to the back alley. And as you look up, you can see that it looks like the lock has been jimmied and slammed open uh, on the back door. Oh, well, in that case, I'm, I'm bursting in there. Sure. You know, some sick kind of vault up the like steps that come, you know, up into the room and you uh, uh, you burst it open and you're in the back kitchen. Um, and uh, what you see immediately is there are like grease pans on the ground there are frying pans that have been thrown uh, uh, uh around and like shit is on the floors like th some kind of kerfuffle has happened in the last couple of minutes clearly hey low lifes you better get out of my restaurant uh there's no response i uh i pick up a, a metal frying pan in one hand and i got the brass knuckles in the other and i'm, mm. I'm moving it Okay, uh, you burst into the dining room, uh, uh, and you hear a crash upstairs. There's like a second floor to the restaurant, uh, the, the upstairs dining area. 
Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to tiptoe up the stairs. Uh, roll stealth. Fifteen. Uh, so you uh you're inching up the stairs very quietly. You know, you've been in this place a million times. When you're with customers, your father, you know, your your father's words echo in your mind. I don't want to hear a fucking stair creak when you are serving customers. Our stairs need to appear to be flawless. I know they're not, but they must appear to be. So you 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 know all the spots to step around, uh, and you make it incredibly quietly up the stairs. And as you turn around the banister at the top of the stairs, you just see the same silhouette of the killer. As he slits Frankie One's neck, just... I... I and he dive casts, at him. casts her to the ground, and the other one is backing up against the wall and catches your eye. Uh, and uh, you dive at him, roll initiative. What's your initiative? Have, it didn't have to go this way, Ada. 13. 13. Uh, all right. Um, you are up first, Pauly. You also get an attack of opportunity. Um, so actually, you will attack first, uh, and then we will go into the turn order. Um, so you get an, a, a, an attack of opportunity here. Okay. Uh, I rolled a... Hold on, let me relearn how my weapon works real quick. Strength. Okay, sorry. It's a uh, 11. Uh, that is a miss. Um, so you, you know, you dive in, take a big haymaker, uh, and he manages to slip out of the way, and as he turns to you, you get your first genuine glimpse of the killer. Uh, he appears to be a sort of disheveled, late 20-something, early 30-something, tall, lanky, white guy. Um, sort of short black hair and sort of a, a, a middle part. Um, and uh, he's got brown eyes, and he he's wearing a, a, a sort of like a, a long sleeve button down, no tie, top two buttons unbuttoned, third button in like the wrong slot, um, and some jeans and tennis shoes. And he... He backs up, uh, and he looks like, uh, cr like he's got crazy eyes. Is the best way I can I can I can explain it to you. Um, and he spins the the sort of knife he has in his hand into the like like more attacking position. Um, and uh, it is your turn. Okay. Um, he was faster than I thought, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to just grab him uh, by the shirt. Okay. If I can, and then I'm just gonna headbutt him as hard as I can. Okay. Uh, let's do a strength off to see if you can grapple him. Yeah. Um, this is just a, a home rule way I like to do this. Uh, so just roll a proper strength check, and I'll do the same. Polly's uh, a little bit too enraged to think or see straight. He rolls a one. Uh, okay. You do. You are unable to grab him. Um, but, you know, we, we can say that you're still able to take a, a, an attack in here, sure, uh, uh, on, on this on this turn. Okay. Fourteen. That hits. Okay. Uh, I'm, I missed with my with my empty hand, and I'm going with the brass knuckles. Sure. Uh, the brass knuckles are... Five damage. Okay, nice. You, you know, grab at with the left hand and then sock in with the right brass knuckle. Slaps him right in the face. You hear his jaw crack a little bit, um, and you feel it uh, into the the you know the breadth of your hand, um, and blood spatters over to your brass knuckles, and he flails a little bit. Um, and at this point, uh, the other Frankie, um, what? <laughs> Hang on. I gotta remember their name. Francis and Francine. So it was Francine that was killed. Or that was, you know, knifed. And Francis has Francine. Uh, and he's, you know, he's like you. He's a little bigger. Uh, and he has her on his shoulder. And he's like, Polly, I'm gonna get the fuck out of here. Frankie, go! And he 
he like slides down the banister uh, down to the bottom, holding uh, his his twin sister, and they burst out the door. You hear it open, and you hear yelling, uh, and then uh, it's uh, it's on the killer now. Um, and the killer just sort of looks at you and starts like swaying back and forth really weirdly and then swipes at you with the knife. And as the knife is approaching you, that sort of ominous brink energy you had felt, you can now sense it is fully coming from this individual and it is like harnessed. Um, does a 15 hit you? No. Okay. He swings at you and misses uh, and it's your turn again. Uh, how does, uh, communicating work? Can I, does that in, in lieu of my action? What do you mean? Bonus action? Like, if I try to talk to him instead of... How we've sort of meta it before was, like, it's a free action within reason. You know, you can't have a two-minute-long conversation, necessarily. But especially in a one-on-one, like, you can sort of animate it, where, like, conversations take place over a very short span of time. Yeah, um, yeah, uh, yeah. So, yeah, you can you can attempt to communicate with him. All right. I mean, Polly is just, like, he's red in the face. He's tears are streaming down his face. He's so angry. He's so mad. And he's just, he just all he can splutter out is just, why? And uh, there's no response, and the killer just continues to sort of do this swaying motion. Talk to me! And he raises the knife. All right. Going in again. This is a this is a full body tackle attempt. Just straight okay. to the straight to the stomach. All right. What am I what am I rolling? Uh, roll a strength. Roll roll. Roll a d twenty and add strength. Okay. This is twenty one. Uh, yeah, you're able to tackle him to the ground, and he takes we'll say two damage from that. Okay. And I'm, uh, I'm, just, I'm gonna try to just hold him as hard as I can. Sure, you're holding him there, uh, uh, and he, on his turn, is going to attempt to break free um, of this grapple with a strength save. Uh, so you suddenly feel a wave of Brink energy pulsating out of this individual, and suddenly the sh- like he's easily lifting your hands off of him and like presses you off of him and then swipes at you with a hand and not the knife. Does a 19 hit you? Sure does. Okay, you take... Six damage. Okay. Socks you, and you are, like, blasted into the wall. And wood splinters around you. Uh, And from this, we go into Polly Lasagna's mind. And Polly, suddenly all thoughts of whatever was going on drifts away from you. Uh, You are in a liminal space. Um, and you wake and you're in some kind of lab, uh, some kind of like laboratory scientists are doing experiments uh, and you look up at the door and it says LIGO, um, uh, L-I-G-O. And there are scientists talking about gravitational waves. Um, and they, uh, they say, uh, they say, Yes, well, the the next test is coming up momentarily, so if we could please get the data stream, you know, in as quickly as possible, um, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, lots of sciencey stuff about uh, the LIGO detector, and uh, which is a real thing that you can Google. Um, and then uh, they flip a couple switches, turn a few dials, and they're like, test commencing in three, two, one. And they both turn two knobs, and uh, suddenly the whole world begins to wave. Uh, the floors and the ceilings and the walls undulate um, and the scientists begin to float weightlessly and you begin to float weightlessly and then uh, snap back to reality Um, you and you feel Brink pouring out of your body and you feel an impulse to turn the bracelet I do it Uh, and you know the words to say they are within Uh, you it's true uh Polly, despite his uh, his rage, feels a, a moment of fleeting embarrassment as he screams the words, Gravity Schmavity! And he uh, points at the guy and tries to make gravity towards... Uh, is there a window kind of behind him? Yes. Uh, gravity is going to go backwards for this guy. Okay. Through a window at times two Earth gravity. 
All right, and so we're, we're talking, we're talking roughly time, 20, 20 meters per second squared. At the same time, Polly is going to launch himself at the guy and add his impulse to him. Okay. Uh, how the hell are we going to calculate this? Um, give me a second here. Uh, so he begins to shift, like literally it's like Super Mario Galaxy, the arrow swapped on the wall. Uh, and he, the, all the gravity field vectors just for him push back and he and starts floating back towards the wall, falling twice the speed of Earth's gravity. Uh, so he feels twice as weighty, twice as heavy. Um, and he's flying towards the window um, and you apply yourself uh, towards him. And uh, why don't you roll another strength hit? 18. Uh, you hit. And uh, you smash into him uh, and he takes... I'll just roll this for you because I'm sort of like choosing dice as yeah. I go that seem relevant. I'm trying to go through the window with him. Yeah, that I got was you. not clear. Okay. Uh, he takes nine damage. Uh, actually, ten. Let's do a bonus that way. So it's ten. He takes ten damage into the window. The glass shatters, and the two of you go flying out the window. And you did you change gravity for yourself? I was going with him. Yeah, at the same. Okay. Moment. But I, yeah. I pushed off the wall that I was going, so I caught up. The two of you, and he's more weighted than you, and now there's more energy. You fly into the next building. Um, and uh, as the gravity starts to dissipate, you land in the adjacent building window. Shattered glass. And you're sort of getting like, uh, 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 this is your first time experiencing this. You're like suddenly exhausted. Uh, and you tumble on the ground, and now you're out of the radius of initial effect, right? Or is there a radius around you? Uh, it's it's around where where we started. Right. So now you sort of tumble on the ground in this like empty office space, uh, uh, bumping into uh, 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 cubicles, and as you try to rise, you notice that he's bolting. Uh, he he's running, uh, and just as you get up to chase, you feel a thump, and you land on the ground, unconscious. Back to all players. Um. All right, we accelerate back to the moment where Rusty has just entered this sort of office uh, uh, area within this warehouse. Um, and uh, Rusty, there is a sort of armored guard uh, who has, has spotted a, a rat. Uh, and that's all he assumes it is. Um, but you see Polly, Rusty. Um, and I've taken cover under a desk or something, mm -hmm. I think I remember from last time. That's correct. Um, can I scan the room for anything of note? Yes, there is a, let me see if I can do this consistently because I think, I think I described it, but let's see. I, there's a computer on a desk, uh, on the far end, or maybe under, the, you're under the desk with the computer. There's Polly in the chair in the middle, and the guy was leaning up against something on the other side. And then there's sort of the fluorescent lights, uh, above you. Um, and, uh... The guy's now looking for something to hit you with, like a broom or something. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the the gross rat thing. I'm just gonna scamper at this guy and try to go up his pant leg. Mm, uh, you you are able to. You are able to do so. <laughs> All right. Am I conscious Great. right now? Am I? Uh, yeah, Polly, you're you're awake. Okay. You I'm woke up. Bed. Polly will say you woke up like ten minutes ago, uh, and you've of course been like putting up a fight, but you are gagged. Mm -hmm. um, you're roped and gagged and duct taped to the chair and everything. Am I facing a direction where I can see this happening? You are facing the desk that Rusty just went under, and the guy went towards the desk, so he's in between you and Rusty, and Rusty goes up the pant leg. Hmm. And I'm, I'm like, shouting obscenities as I'm doing this. I'm just like, yeah, that's what you get for trying to hit me with a stick. I, mean, I don't know if this guy's being sensitive or if he can even hear <laughs> me, but this is, this is what I imagine all rats are doing in this, this moment of, like, extreme panic. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. Um, and he's like... <laughs> he's, like, trying, he's hitting his legs and hitting... His <laughs> And, and he, bite him. He, bite him on uh, the thigh. He takes one damage and he he falls to the <laughs> ground. And he's skimpering back to the wall and he's like tries to try to take his pants off. He's like, <laughs> um, and uh, he's in a state of disarray. All right. And um, is is Polly gagged? Like is Polly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To... yeah. Okay. Um.
Well, I suppose leaving him in that that situation is okay. I'm gonna scamper back out and like to the chair and see if there's like a rope I can bite through or something uh, like that. The you think that the the ropes tying his hands would not be that hard to break. Okay, I'll climb up the back of the chair. I'll be like, "Don't worry, Polly, we got you out of this." And I'll just like start gnawing on the on the rope. Um, we'll say that that is gonna take. Uh, well, I guess you have the knife. I do have that too. That's true. I always so forget actually, about that. Yeah, so you have the knife. Let's um, use that. So you can actually saw through the thing. Um, and uh, could you roll a d20? Could you roll a hit on the rope, please? Yeah. Be careful. The rope is strong. Um, Roll to hit with the knife. Let's see here. Um, So that is 13. Uh, great. You're able to saw it open. Um, and, uh, Polly, you, you know, the classic, feel the wrists, uh, and you notice that the bracelet is gone, it's on the adjacent table. Uh, first thing I do is try to take whatever's on my face off. Yeah, you're able to, there's duct tape and a, a sort of rope thing that you're able to untie and, you know, breathe freely for the first time in however long. Yeah. I, uh, I look back and say thank you, and I, I go for my bracelet is, is there anybody else in this room that, aside from that guy Forget. no but you're still your feet are still tied to the chair oh uh, uh can so i like you, scoot my way yeah, to yeah the... you can you can do the we, little we little don't want to come down in the room during this well so you can't fit uh is the thing this was a tiny opening that rusty was able to fit through oh i um, thought okay uh but you guys are up there you're welcome to announce yourselves if you want um Okay. Uh, Paul, you're able to get your bracelet uh, and put it on. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna. Is the guy on the ground? Uh, he was on the ground, like flailing, and now he's starting starting to realize what's happening, and he's getting up and reaching for something in his back pocket. Uh, I yell, "Rabbit! If you got any more tricks up your sleeve, now's the time with that guy." What? Whoa, me? <laughs> Rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> you, you call me uh, now's not the time I, I i just go back and i do the same thing but i go like up his up, up the adjacent shirt he, he is he is he is equally as just as afraid this time uh <laughs> and he's like not the nips uh and he's like he's like hitting his chest and like he's like uh flailing about clearly this guy does not like rodents uh not a fan um, while that while that's happening press. i'm gonna try to untie my my legs you're able to do so uh and you're out the chair fully free Okay. Uh, Can well, I get out of here now? This guy smells. <laughs> Come on out. Is there so anybody else with you, or is it just you? Are we all just watching from like the hole in the ceiling? Yeah, I quietly think so. While all of I this think is happening? so. Oh, okay. I didn't yeah. want to talk. I, I I clamber out and I just like point upwards. I just wave from the through the hole. R Ryan's also waving. <laughs> How high is the ceiling? Uh, ten feet. Oh, I could I could reach that. No problem. Is it is it like? How big are the, like are the ceiling tiles like those foam things? The no, this isn't like that. It's like it's like a rafter type deal, and there's just an opening for like airflow uh, that Rusty was able to like come down through. It might have been higher than ten feet, but not by like a ton, because uh, this isn't the proper warehouse. This is like a raised up office thing, um, uh, so you wouldn't be able to fit through Polly anyway, unless you like burst it open. Gotcha. All right. Um, well, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna get in the guy's face on the ground. Okay. And be like, "What happened to Frankie?" Uh, and he reaches back for a firearm. Do I have time to try to prevent this from happening? I think you can get a reaction in. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna try to just grab his wrist and pin it. Uh, roll strength, and I'll roll strength saving throw. Five. <laughs> uh, he is able to... Actually, let's do dexterity instead because this is a quick, not a strong. So roll a, roll a dexterity check and I'll just change my roll to a, a strength save. Uh, okay. Five. <laughs> yeah, I got a 20 Nine. that time and an 18 before, so it doesn't really help. Uh, <laughs> he's able to scoot out of the way um, and uh, he uh, goes to a radio on his chest, pulls a firearm out. <laughs> 
yeah, we got bogeys. And then he unclicks the radio, and you just hear a bunch of commotion in the area below. Uh, and all of you hear this as well, up on the roof. This doesn't look good. Uh, uh, um, how bulletproof is a, is a robot? Uh, we're kind of, like, futzing the, like... I, you don't have to worry about... Guns are going to act essentially like bows and arrows, um, uh, in the sense that the the in-game rationale for this is that not only are your clothes protecting you, right, but, like, uh, your brink energy is a defense mechanism. Um, as for Max, the robot, um, okay. you can we can assume he's infused with some special alloy that gives him protection or something. Basically, it's going to treat his armor class just like all the others. Okay. Um, and yeah, so you hear a bunch of commotion below, a bunch of guys are like loading up guns and you know, uh, and getting ready for battle. Thanks. And Ryan is like, we need to get down there. Get down there, can, can we get him up somehow? Uh, 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 does anybody feel strong enough that they could pull this tile off? Max, can you do it? I can try. Uh, and he reaches in and grabs it. And uh, could you roll a strength check for Max, please? Yeah, Max has... Strength is okay. Uh, only seven. Uh, no, he's unable to pry it open. Okay. Uh, and Ryan is just like, why don't we just go down below and... Polly, Rusty, you take that guy. We'll take the others. Roger. Uh, Sorry, and... we'll come get you. <laughs> Uh, Rusty, or You have me. your plan point, by the way. The what? The plan, the plan thing. You gotta... Oh, uh, yeah! Oh, yeah, we did plan. Remember? Yeah, plan. You all still have, like, a... How did it work again, Fu? Um, you have a... Uh... Or, let me see. You choose either attack roll, saving throw, or ability check. And you can activate this benefit to gain a bonus to your uh, intelligence modifier to those rolls till the start of your next turn. Uh, so there you go. Do with that information what you will. Um, and uh, Ryan starts booking it back down the sort of fire escape uh, to get to the entrance. Um, and uh, they hop down the ladder and they are looking behind to see if uh, Mamba and Chance and Lexi and Max are following. Gamers, yeah. Uh, are, are you following? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna, I'm yes. gonna wait until like everyone else like follows. I just want to like you know make sure that you know uh, no one's coming in from like any other angle. So I yeah, just want to yeah, like, yeah. you know. Yeah, it looks fine from up here. You don't sense that there's anybody outside really. They were all inside this, and the one entrance is just that like front area. Sure. Max will be going before Lexi. Okay. Because she needs the safeguard apparently. <laughs> right. Um, and uh. Ryan sort of waits for you at the front entrance without throwing the doors open, sort of hopefully to get like a... Well, I guess actually they don't do that because they're all going to the office. They don't know about you yet. Um, and so uh, Ryan throws the doors open um, and says, we're doing this. And we are going to first... First of all, everybody roll initiative, please. Yes, Captain. Mm -hmm. And I will ask for them one by one. I think my die is cursed today. Oh yeah. shit! Uh oh, Wooly. Same. You've had a rough day, Polly. Yeah. Lexi. Not twenty. So twenty-one. Yes. No wonder you're dancing. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of us are here, like. Like three. Uh, <laughs> Rusty. Nine. Polly. Four. Up to do. Mamba. Twelve. Chance. A fat eight. We love a fat eight. Uh, okay. Um, we do love a fat eight. Yeah, You're that right. didn't Absolutely. sound. That that's like I said it. It didn't feel right to say. Um, Lexi, you're up first. See, I figured. Um, so wait, are doors open or no? 
uh, the doors have been thrown open. Okay, what the can door's we see? been thrown open. Uh, what the you see is there are five armed guards inside that have put down like welding gear uh, and have picked up rifles and are loading like M16s uh, and putting on helmets and like quickly donning vests. Um, are they like spread out? Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's sort of an open like 40 feet wide, 100 foot long warehouse where they are working on something. There is some piece of machinery that is being worked on in the center. Uh, and there are lots of like, you know, cables coming down to it and everything. And they are along it. There's two at the front on either side of it. And the machine is maybe 10 feet wide. And then there is one at the back and two uh, on either side in the middle. So they're like every 20 feet. Uh, there's a group of them, two, then two, then one. Okay, uh, and then 20 more. feet past that or so is the office where Rusty and Polly are. Okay, I have like two more questions. <laughs> um, okay. Is there any kind of like, uh, what kind of lighting is throughout the building? Uh, it's fluorescent bulbs hanging from the ceiling all throughout. It's like very kind of dimly lit in that sense. Okay. Um, and how close are they standing to the machines? Uh, they've backed away maybe five feet. Okay. Wondering what I can do with this. And am I close to like a light switch to the building? Uh, I don't I think so. Away? No. I can't run anything. Uh, oh god, I guess I have to. <laughs> did not even enter my mind that I have to design every space this way now. Um, oh no! <laughs> uh, the the light switch you can see for yeah maybe it's on if you're like on the left like i imagine you guys just entered the door on the mm -hmm. left side the light switch is like on the right uh up against the wall okay and i have a i have a basic understanding of my brain already yes because of that okay um okay no i have to look up more things on this <laughs> <laughs> we can go to one person before you if you want so you can think about what you want to do and then we can come because there's the enemies aren't going to go for a bit Okay, um, sure. Sweet. Uh, so we'll do Ryan first. Um, Ryan is going to uh, take off their gloves and reach into the floor and collect a mound of concrete as, like, mud, basically, uh, and hurl it at one of the guys. Um, and misses. But as it whizzes past the guy, it solidifies into, like, you know, a 10 pound concrete ball and it and it hits the wall and makes a dent and sticks into the cast iron um and you see ryan just like snap their fingers uh and after ryan is mamba all right well you're gonna let the brink loose just yet there's a whole bunch of people there let me actually take on uh one, one of the one of the guys in the first row, by the one on the left, first row. Okay. Uh, I will approach, lunge at with the machete, if possible. Sure. You're able to close that distance and swing, for sure. Uh, roll to hit. It's a 19 hit. I'm on the wrong document. Uh, what'd you say, 19? Yeah. Yes. Very cool. Uh, machete, my machete just said that's the 1d8 plus 2. Should be 1d8 plus probably strength. Yeah, that's my strength. We have a 5. Uh, 5 damage, nice. Um, I was looking at the wrong thing again. Nice job. Yeah, and I, yeah I moved and I attacked, so that'll be my turn. Sweet. Uh, you slice at him and cut some of the, the vest open and you feel, you know, a gash form. Um, Lexi, to answer your question, yes, I think that's how it works. Yeah, I think that. Okay, cool. Uh, and we'll go to you, Lexi. Okay. Um, we'll say, like, Max, cover me! And she's going to run to the light switch and um, put her hand on it. Well, she'll turn the bracelet. Right. I guess I have to say... Uh, yes, you do. Influential current. Uh, and uh, you feel shocks throughout your body suddenly. Yes, and my hand is on the light switch, so I don't know if that takes a turn. I assume that takes a turn. Yeah, I think sapping the energy from it will take a turn. Yeah. 
Um, but you begin to observe the energy and Max starts to cover you. Uh, what would you like Max to do? Um, how close, how close would I be to, uh, that's a good question. Um, yeah. five, like 15 feet away. 15? Yeah, 15 feet away from the nearest guy. And it's, and, uh, uh, Mamba is on that guy. That's the one that he's already on. I, yeah. I don't think I'm in any immediate danger, so I kind of want Max to stand in like a defense. defense okay, position. sure. Yeah, Max crosses his arms and stands in front of you. Or just like a, you know, ready to do something. Right, like big surface area in case bullets come in right. uh, and is uh, in between the two of you. Yeah, and he still has some kind of something. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember what he got, so no worries. All right. Is that cool for that to be your turn? Uh, yeah, because I don't think I'm going to be able to do anything else yet. Sweet. Uh, we did Ryan, we did Mamba, which means it is Rusty. All right. And I'm in the office with the dude who just alerted everybody, right? Yes. Um. All right. And he well, took one damage from a bite so far. Yeah. No more fun and games. Um, we're not just like crawling around in his clothes and freaking him out. Although that might be a good distraction tactic for Polly to come <laughs> and do something. So yeah, you know what? Let's do that again. I kind of just look at him like, okay, well, you asked for it, buddy. And right up the pant leg again on the right side. Uh, he hates it as much as the previous two times. Yeah. Um, and uh, <laughs> he's like trying to hit you. Uh, and you can still attack him if you want. Oh, okay. I guess that's just movement, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> sort of. Uh, I'll do another bite, but I guess I'll roll for this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, my rolls are like poly rolls today. Um, I'm I'm assuming that a seven does not hit. It does not. No. You're all you're all kerfuffled with all this stuff that's going on. You can't see anything, um, and uh, uh, you you're unable to make a bite that lands. He moves his leg, and you sort of shift around in the pant leg. Uh, just uh, you know, the wrong. You see his heart boxers, of course. Um, and uh, uh, you're able to scrape to a halt on the pant leg uh, and stay there. Gotcha. Um, after Rusty, God, this song slaps. Um, the guy is going to go next, and he uh, attempts to slap where you are, Rusty. Mm -hmm. Does an 18 hit? Yes. You take five damage. Okay. Uh, he, boom, like it's concussive, uh, and you slip out of the pant leg and fall down to the ground. I'm like, you're dazed. Um, uh, this is a good question that Danny's just asked me in DMs. I don't know that any of us have discussed how often you can use your Brink powers, uh, which uh -huh. is why I bring it up. Um, for those of you that have a Brink power that is more combat pivotal, um... I think I think Rusty is once, once or twice per long rest probably. Um, I'm gonna say Polly. Yours is a definitely a finite number of times per long rest. Let's stick with two for now. Um, uh, Chance, yours is like used whenever you want. Um, uh, Mamba, how, did we decide Mine's on? Mine's useless, so I can use it all the time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mamba, did we decide how often you can use yours? I feel like we did talk about this. Uh, I don't see any of it in the notes. Yours, I feel like, also can be used quite a lot um, because it More requires so much of your turn to do yeah. it. Um, so we'll say you're fine for now to just use it as long as it's active. Maybe, yeah, we'll say it's fine for now. And Lexi, yours we're going to handle case by case because it's supposed to exhaust you as you use it. Right. Um, yeah. Okay, good. I'm glad we covered that. Uh... What just happened? He slapped you. You rolled out of the leg. Yes. Um, and he's now going to pull out his pistol, and he attempts to shoot Polly. He basically is, he's like, I guess we're not interrogating you anymore. I'm making an executive decision. Uh, and he attempts to shoot you. Uh, he misses. He's sort of still jittery from the rat, and, he, poof, and the bullet whizzes by your, your, your chest and uh, hits the glass behind you, and it shatters. Um... And uh, that is his turn. He's up against the wall still. And we are going to go to the guys outside. Uh, and the guy in the back, we're just going to move from the back to the front. Uh, the guy in the back attempts to uh, shoot at Ryan. That is a hit. And Ryan takes eight damage. 
uh, just, you know, a, a single round. And the Brink, truly, this is the first time you've seen someone get shot who has, like, Brink energy. Um, and the bullet, like, hurts them, but uh, uh, it doesn't, like, sink into them. It's like a bludgeoning thing. Uh, you sense that these bullets are being shot without any Brink energy behind them. Uh, so your Brink energy and your Brink armor are protecting you. Uh, but it's like a bludgeoning damage from just the impact uh, of the bullet hitting hitting Ryan. Uh, so they take eight damage. Uh, then uh, the next person, uh, the next two, you know, they both shoot. Uh, one of them towards Chance and one of them towards Mamba. No. Chance, does a 14 hit you? Uh... Yes. You got the new armor. You got that new armor. Does it still hit through that? Oh, um... No. Nice. Okay. Well, if it's the same, my armor class uh, is 14. Ty goes, Ty goes to the roller. Oh. Oh, yes. Uh, so, yes, it does hit. Heck. You Heck. take four damage. No, don't uh, do that. It, it feels like a really, like, really horrible paintball. I haven't even done anything. I'm just standing there in a trench coat <laughs> <zone. laughs> and just oh, shot me. <laughs> um, uh, Mamba, does a 14 hit you? No. Okay. The bully, yeah. <laughs> you know, goes out of the way. <laughs> uh, yeah, it does. Uh, uh, <laughs> then uh, the guy right up next to you, Mamba, pulls out a tactical knife. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Because I get holding. to use one of my special abilities once he misses with the gun. You've activated my trap card. That's right. <laughs> it's called redirect attack. When a creature misses with, with an attack, you can use the reaction to force that creature to repeat the same attack against another creature so I can get him to shoot one of the bad guys. What? <laughs> that's, that's insane! <laughs> All right, I have no in-game justification for this, but here it's happening. Um, uh, do they... Um, do Actually, I do have a justification for this. Um, do they have to make a, a save or something? It's uh, within... F Within five feet of me, with a, uh, a creature within five roll feet, with oh, disadvantage as well. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. There, yeah. Okay, so it's burst fire. Shoots yeah. one, shoots a second, and it goes towards uh, their their colleague. Uh, and I roll with disadvantage. You said you roll with disadvantage. Okay. All right, they miss, but the second bullet almost hits uh, uh, their their friend, and the person. Like, oh, uh, <laughs> And uh, the guy that's next to you is now going to pull out a tactical knife and, and swipe at you. Sure. Does a 19 hit? Yeah. You take five damage. Sorry. And it swipes at you with a with a knife. Um, and uh, up next after them... Oh, there's the two guys in the front. Or no, I just did one of them, so there's one more uh, who is going to shoot at Ryan as well. That's a miss. Cool. All of them have gone. We now go to Polly. Okay. Is this guy on the ground or is he up? He's up. Okay. Uh, first, I'm going to yell, what kind of monster works with people who stab little girls? He says... I can hear that, can I? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, no, only Rusty can hear that. Okay. Uh, and he says, <laughs> he says, look, man, I don't know what happened back there. <laughs> I just, I just hold the hostages. You assholes killed my sister. And I go and go for his face. What do you mean go with the brass knuckles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 14. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which they yeah, didn't yeah, take yeah. out of your pocket, yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what did you roll? 14. 14? Uh, that is a miss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a miss. You punch the wall behind him. And like, you know, the iron bends. The like sheet metal bends. Uh, would you like to do anything else? Uh, there is nothing else I can do. <laughs> you fucker! <laughs> oh, dang it. Um, <laughs> great. Uh, after Polly is Lexi again. Okay. Um, so, okay. Hear me out. I'm listening. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm gonna assume that I've, um, maybe told Max what's up or, like, made mod and i don't know I yeah, yeah, yeah 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 i think he's holding well enough yeah, where yeah, he's yeah, ready yeah. i'm gonna um who's who which guard is like the least 
attacked, I guess. Am I near enough to one that needs... There are... Uh, everybody's kind of whiffing. Um, so, really, Mamba's the only one that's done anything uh, uh, substantial. Um, I skipped Chance, I just realized. Um, oh, I'm I was sorry. wondering. Yeah, I, you were supposed to go earlier. I'll get you in a second. Okay. Um, but, uh, actually, yeah, let's... I'll tell you this, first. Lexi, but then I'm going to go do Chance. Uh, the guy that Mamba's on is the only one who's been damaged that you can see so far. The other four are, like, unhurt. Um, okay. Chance, it's your turn. Okay. I would like to do an action and then a bonus action. Okay. Because Chance is not a fighter. Um, He's very scared of combat. Okay. My action is going to be looking around for things to steal in a panic. Because I'm very scared, and it's what I know. Okay. There are wrenches on the ground near you. How um, many can I take? <laughs> it's a there's like five. It's like a bulk order that just came in from Amazon. I'm there's like can five wrenches. Yeah, you can, can take, take the them. five wrenches yeah, from yeah, Amazon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Cool. Pocket the wrenches. They're Amazon Basics wrenches. Oh, well, that's great. <laughs> right. they'll, they'll they'll do the job. They'll do the job. I, I'm not like a wrench expert or anything, so that's fine. right. Um, and then as my bonus action, I would like to do something my character can do, which is called taunt. Um. And I would like to taunt the man in front of Mamba. Okay, and what does that do? Um, let's see. They, on a failed save, like if they fail the saving throw for this, uh, they will have disadvantage on their next attack roll, ability check, or saving throw. Okay, sweet. Uh, so what is the a, saving throw here? Uh, wisdom saving throw. DC of, it looks like it's going to be... 13? 13. Okay. They fail. Nice. Uh, can I ask what you taunt them? What do you say? Yes. I look at them while waving around a handful of wrenches and say, you're a smelly booger fart, and you're going to miss. <laughs> um, they are sufficiently taunted. Good. Uh, <laughs> they, say, they say... They say... Dang it! And then they get all riled up. Uh, I really Mom said it was my turn class. with the Xbox. Um, <laughs> exactly. Uh, right on. Is that your turn, Chance? That's my turn. Okay. Oh, can I can I move? Yes. As far away as possible from any conflict. Yeah, you can walk around the outside door and be outside the warehouse. I would like to do that. Okay. I would like to hide and leave. You are hiding. Thank you. Uh, behind cover. Very fair. You are being shot at by not one, not two, not three, not four, I, but five men. <laughs> I already got hit as well. I'm, I, am I the only one that's been hit by a bullet so far? Uh, Ryan also got hit. Okay, but yeah, I got hit You've by a shot. bullet. I'm yeah. leaving. Goodbye. <laughs> I've been shot. I'll go. Um, I think very fair. Uh, Lexi. <laughs> okay, so, um, so well, the guy that, that Mama's hit is probably, like, having to deal with that. So he's right. distracted. Um, so I'm going to go to the next nearest. Am I within 30 feet of the next person? Yes. Okay. I'm going to be like, let's go, Max. And I'm going to jump on his back. Okay. Like a piggyback style. Yeah, He's yeah, going to yeah. run full force to the guy and put his robot hands around the guy's neck. Jesus Christ. Okay. And I'm going to release <laughs> my electrical energy into through Max into... Okay. Can you have Max roll... <laughs> A dexterity check for me, please. So just roll a d20 and add dex. Okay. Uh, 17. Yeah, you're a he grapples. Uh, he's got his, and it's not like a proper grapple. Uh, uh, you're just wrapping the arms around. It's not like a yeah, chokehold or anything. Yeah, he's not trying to like choke him out. Yeah, yeah, just, just putting like... the arms around his neck. Uh, great, and you're releasing your brink energy? Yes. Yeah, so this man is electrocuted. Um... <laughs> How yes. so? I don't know that we ever did the. Did I'll just really... do this on. I'll just do this on a case by case. Um, <laughs> when you pulled the energy out of the light socket, the lights flickered a bunch, and then of course you know Kate Bush comes on. You float. Um, no, you you pull the energy out of the lights, uh, and two of the lights fully turn off. Okay. Um, and uh, the energy release will say does. This is pretty involved two turn set. This is like solar beam. Like, this is a two turn setup. Yeah, basically. <laughs> um, I'll say roll 2d10 plus. What's the higher of your two stats, intelligence and wisdom? Which one's better? Uh, my. Um, 
Oh, that's Max's. I was like, why am I not smart? I ain't smart. Why am uh, I not smart? My intelligence smart. is higher. Uh, so let's do 2d10 plus intelligence. Okay. So roll two and add them together? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Then um, that's uh, nine. Nine total? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, he... And just like, he's like... Oh, oh. And uh, he takes nine damage. Um, and he falls to the ground and he's not dead, but he's like so jarred and miserable. Um, and he's just like, he's like, huh, huh, huh. uh, okay, yeah, nice work. Can I jump off Max's back real quick? And I assume we're near the, we're now near the um, machinery. Yeah, you're within five feet of the machine. Okay. So I'm gonna kind of just jump down and kind of squat between Max and the machinery, maybe see if I can kick the guy's gun away or something. Okay, uh, yeah, he dropped the gun and you're able to kick it and it slides on the floor <laughs> over okay. to the side. Okay. Um, is that your turn? I mean, that was a pretty big action, I don't think. Yeah, I yeah, I think that's it. And I'm um, gonna look think over at that and make a comment like, I didn't know it was Friday. Oh my God. Oh my God. Um, all that right. That reminds me of Star Wars Force Unleashed. Oh boy. <laughs> Ryan's turn. Uh, Ryan is going to run up and uh, slide and attempt to scoop the concrete out from underneath the guy that's in front of them. They do so, and the guy falls in, and then Ryan covers them and just backs away, and the man is buried alive. Uh, <laughs> And you hear shooting, you hear like shooting because it's like a cavern. Because uh, the concrete like almost instantly after stopping being in contact with Ryan solidifies. So it didn't like droop and fill. It's like an open casket underneath the ground that this dude is just like trapped beneath under the Excavated, concrete. You really don't have to describe this in such on. detail. <laughs> All right, Patrick, let me do my job and you do yours, okay? Oh, How about that, bro? Oh, oh, oh. Um, and uh, yeah, you hear shooting as this guy tries to like, and just probably accidentally shoots himself or something. Um, uh, this dude is out. Um, and after Ryan, and Ryan stops there. Uh, and after that is Mamba. Oh, Mamba's gonna get into a little bit of CQC with the guy in front of him. So he's gonna still lunge out with the machete. Okay. That was a 17 to hit. That hits. Nice. Nice. <laughs> I was near, we were near another guy, right? Weren't there two together? Uh, there are, when I said together, it was like on opposite ends of the machine. So it's like oh, the machine it. takes up 10 feet and they're on okay, opposite good. sides. Don't worry. Um, uh, how much damage did you do in the first turn, Bobby? That was five. Okay, excellent. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, roll damage and this here. this is uh, nine damage. Uh, you s cut his chest and he falls to the ground dead. Ooh. Um, brutal execution style. Brutal. That's brutal. Um, <laughs> this is self defense. This is self defense. <laughs> this is self defense. This is self defense. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't think I should see this in my age. Campaign three is a stand your ground state. Um, <laughs> I, don't think I, I don't think I should make that joke. Uh, is, would you like to move, Maba? Yeah, I'm gonna move uh, to the next row, like, like in between the next row of, of the two. Of, I think there's like three, three left. So it's it's two, two, one. You just killed this guy. Yeah. Ryan killed this guy. So the yeah. next group is the electrocuted guy in front of you, and then on the other end, an untouched guy, and then in the back, an untouched then, guy. Yeah, we're gonna, we'll, we'll use. Uh, actually, we'll use uh, some. Bonus action to dash to the back flank then. Okay. And taunt uh, at the other guys. Yeah, there like you go. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, is that your turn? Yep. Okay. Uh, Rusty, we're back to okay. you. Okay. Um, the sneaky strats are not working for me, so I'm going to try something else. Okay. Um, Polly's close by. Yeah. Like, how yeah. far are the, these two standing from each other? They're direct. They're up. They're literally face to face. Okay. I'm going to use Polly, not in the pants, but outside as like a climbing <laughs> mechanism me. and oh, okay. like right. climb up and hop off his shoulder, pull out the knife and take a slash. Okay. Jumping attack. Love it. 
Are you used to having rats crawl up you? He's a man of New York, of course well, he is. Yeah. <laughs> Standard occurrence. <laughs> it's a colleague. Uh, uh, 22. That hits. Excellent. A few um, weeks ago in real life, a rat darted across the sidewalk and just crashed into my shoe as I was walking. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. He just crashed into my shoe head first and then ran away. It was very confused. As it as as you do sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Nobody claimed they were smart. Um, that'll be for three damage. Right on. And then you as a bonus, his cheek. Yeah, and I get him. I, I get him. got him. Um, and I guess because I'm lunging at him, maybe I'll just like land on his chest or something, and I'll use helpful as a bonus action, which means that on the next turn. Or not on the next turn. Before my turn comes again, um, Polly gets advantage on an ability check or an attack roll. There you go. We also have the the. Oh wait, the the plan has elapsed because um, it was before oh, yeah. your next turn. Um, okay, great. So you have an advantage on next ability check or attack roll, Polly. Uh, after Rusty is. Rusty, do you want to move anywhere else? I'm staying right on him. There you go. Chance. Hmm. Where are all of everything? Uh, so directly when you turn left uh, and look into the warehouse, there's this like cylindrical machine, right? That spans the center. Mm -hmm. There's a guy dead on the right, right at the front of the machine. Then Ryan's on the left uh, with another guy who's gone. Um, and then 20 feet back from them, there is the guy that's electrocuted on the right side of the machine, and on the left side, there's a guy that's unharmed. And then at the far back of the machine, another 20 feet away, are Mamba and another arm, unharmed guy. Okay. Can I throw one of the mugs that I stole from the office as sure. the unharmed guy. <laughs> sure. Cool. How do we do that? Uh, if you could roll for me a d20 plus dex, and I'm going to make this executive decision now just for fun because I think it's cool. Please add to your brink chance that you have proficiency with anything you've stolen. Oh, man. Oh, okay. That's um, dope. Also, chance has one of these... We'll get into this later, but I have mentioned a few times now that Brinks are sort of like collated into like different categories. Um, and Chance has like an ever present Brink, uh, much like Ryan. How Ryan's is like whenever their skin touches concrete, like it it liquefies. Um, Chance, your Brink is like you can just always access stuff. You mm -hmm. don't have to like say the name every time or whatever. Oh, I don't have to. You twist can my do. Wrist you can do though. Pockets. Pockets. Is it just pockets? It's pockets. I love it. You can do it every time if you want. I don't care. All right. Um, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna chuck a. Yeah, roll a, a roll mug. a d20 plus dexterity plus proficiency. Oh my goodness. Oh good. Whew. I thought it was a six. It's a nine. So that's gonna be a uh, fourteen. Uh, did you add your proficiency? Just say it's a miss. It's a miss. <laughs> chance, chance peeks around the corner. <clears throat> just a coffee mug whizzes past you guys and just misses and crashes into the wall. And the guy's like, "What the fuck?" Um, <laughs> uh, would you like to move? Uh, I would like to do a bonus action, actually. Which one is that? Uh, I can taunt as many times as I want. Apparently. I am loving this. So I'm gonna taunt the guy I threw it at. Okay. I'm gonna uh, say. Oh, yeah, I have to actually do it. What's a That's wisdom? Right. Well, you, you say the thing either way. Whether or not it succeeds or not is a different we'll thing. So what do you say? We'll okay. You don't want to embarrass yourself. I get it. Mm -hmm. um, okay. What's the DC on the wisdom save? Uh, it's going to be 13. Fail. Nice. Uh, there's another mug where that came from, and it's going to hit your mug, you ugly... Ugly fart? No, just ugly. Mm. That was the whole okay. thing. Uh, he's taunted, I guess. <laughs> um, so, uh, he has disadvantage on his next, uh, anything, right? Disadvantage. Disadvantage. On anything. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. Um, excellent. Chance, would you like to move or hide again? I'm just gonna duck my head back around the corner. Right around. Re right ready on. my second mug. 
Uh, we're gonna start in the office with the guy who is going to uh, attempt to shoot Polly point blank. Um, still have to roll. Polly, does a 14 hit you? No. You know, maybe you're able to, like, put your hand down last second and just move the gun slightly, and the bullet, you know, just goes <laughs> past you. Um, and we're going to just retcon that this guy has a multi-attack, um, and he's going to try to punch you. With a rat on him, by the way. This is very impressive. Uh, he misses again. So shoot, swing, miss. This dude's raz. No shot! <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, I know, Bobby, but what are you going to do? There has to be mechanics, otherwise literally everyone's just going to die when this dude just walks up to you and shoots you in the back of the head. <laughs> uh, I want this animated. Animators, get out there. I, I will commission you. <laughs> that, that's going to be expensive. I animated. That's so going to be bad. expensive. Um, we'll go to the guys down on the floor now. Uh, the guy in the back whizzes around to shoot you, Mamba. Does an 18 hit you? It does. Okay. You take 10 damage. Ow. Just a single single shot from them. 16 catches you in the shoulder. Uh, and we'll go then to the guy who's had a mug thrown at him. Um, and he is going to shoot at the wall where Chance was. No. Uh, and he's going to have to burst through the wall and you. That's uh, not going to do it. Chance, you just hear... Doo -doo -doo. <laughs> Like, <laughs> on the wall behind you. Um, and uh, the guy that was electrocuted. little girl? I think there is a... These guys are bad, but, like, I think there is a line some of them are not huh? willing to cross for a paycheck. <laughs> like, they're Only not... electrocuted someone. Plus, you, they watch you kill a man with a robot. They're not, like, amped about what's going on. <laughs> or maybe they are. Ha ha ha. Um, uh, ha ha. So, uh, the electrocuted guy is, like, struggling to get up, and he attempts to punch Max. Okay. Does a 19 hit Max? I'm sure it does. Okay. Let's see, do I have his... Oh, yeah. Uh, he takes five damage. Okay. Where is his... Oh, there, okay. Um, and... Oh, the other guy had to roll with disadvantage anyway, so he totally missed. Um, and that's everybody, I think. Uh, so after them comes Polly. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna try to just, I'm standing right in front of him, right? Yeah. All right. Um, is my, would you say my brink is more of an action or more of a, uh, bonus action? I think it's more of an action, personally. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna just go for an uppercut with the brass knuckles. Okay. If this, this is misses... a bonus, I'm gonna change gravity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is an 18. That hits. Sorry, 20. That hits. Okay. You also have advantage, so roll again to see if you crit. True. I did not. Okay. At some point, Paul is gonna need more than a 1d4 method of dealing damage. Yes, it will come. Okay. It will come. I was about to say the same thing, actually. That's what uh, Rusty's working with. That is that is seven damage. Hey, it's more than you think. Seven is like, I mean, just look it's at not, your own health and you'll see that seven bad. is like not nothing. Yeah. Uh, we don't have like 40 HP tanks walking around. Not yet. Um, not yet. Uh, you. And actually, could you make uppercut pretty brutal? Uh, could you roll a strength? check for me as well and i'm gonna roll a constitution saving throw yeah you got it i also oh. have an inspiration die from last time i don't remember what it was for but oh, i don't, don't either, have that but... anymore it was from when i encouraged you it only lasts 10 minutes oh okay so uh I'm trying to beat minutes. four try to beat a, a four with the try d20 to, try to beat four. Oh, okay uh a five <laughs> Yo, uh, you hit him with the brass knuckles as an uppercut, and like he just falls unconscious. Um, Lights you, out. You KO this guy. Um, Damn. I think it's a combination of all the rat play. <laughs> 
Please don't call it that. Mm, <laughs> that's that's the name now. No, that's canon. Sorry. Mm. Oh Maple no, Red. dude. <laughs> this is like some John Oliver oh, shit in here. We're gonna start off this battle with a little rat play. <laughs> Are there any ladies in the house? If we can hear you, holla. Um, can I can I request this when I do sexy dice in your stream, Patty? God. No. <laughs> uh, so That's he's educational. All, he's educational all only. Razzled and the that plus the uppercut. This dude's out, uh, and he falls to the ground. And he slumps. Um, in the way that like when you're watching MMA and someone gets knocked out, they just become a lifeless corpse. <laughs> Uh, and they just fall into the most, like, compromising position. Um, Wait, how is this room connected to the rest of the space? There's a door at the back and then a staircase down. All right, I'm taking all of my movement to go towards wherever everybody else is. Okay. Um, and you exit out into the landing, and you're able to get behind uh, the guy in the far back. Or what was for them the far back before he was, you know, right in front of you. Uh, is that your turn? That's it. Okay. Uh, uh, Lexi. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Polly. Can I, can I scoop up my rabbit friend as I go? <laughs> Why are you saying rabbit so much? Because Polly is an idiot. You don't know this. It, this a rat, but like he can, he, <laughs> like animals. All he right. No. No. Um, he's a boy. He straight up moron. Okay. Hey. Uh, yeah, you're able to scoop up Rusty uh, as you go. That's actually a fun thing that you couldn't do in any other campaigns, right? Like, except for Grum and Gouger, that was different. Um, yeah. But like, you know, scooping up another player is easy. Danger's for always getting Rusty. scooped up, man. It's, that's my role. That's what I do here. All I he wants to do, he wants to play small animals. This is a benefit of that. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so you're able to scoop Rusty and run uh, uh, behind the guy. Um, and that means it is Lexi's turn. Lexi, you are starting to feel a little tired. Yes, I I would imagine. Um, so the so the guy that I downed is getting back up. Oh yeah, yeah. he tried to punch Max. Yeah. Um, uh, I wonder what happened if I is the machine running at the moment? No. Okay. Um, then I'm gonna have to use. I think I'm gonna have to use Max. He's stronger than I am. Okay. Uh, so I'll be like, go Max. Go and Pikachu. No, wait. I'm going to try to trick him. Okay. Because he's still kind of... What's sure that? Still a little... <laughs> so, uh, I assume he has intelligence six or higher. So, they roll intelligence saving throw. Okay. It says of eight plus proficiency plus intelligence. That's fail. for... That's the DC, yeah. So, you calculate that for your character. Um, eight plus intelligence plus proficiency. Tell me what that number is, and I have oh, to roll okay, better okay, than okay, that. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I wasn't. That was unclear to me. Got it, got it, got it. Um, it doesn't matter what it is. He fails. Okay. Um, well, let me give what that number would be. Um, okay. Two plus. Okay, that would be twelve. And what is the result of this trickery? Um. Ready, down. So I'm gonna tell him. Uh, Someone's coming! <laughs> he's gonna look like, the other way. He's like, huh? And, then, and he, he whips around, and we'll say that when he turns around, Max can attack with advantage right, uh, yeah. here. So I want Max to try to um, basically bop him in the back of the head. Okay. Um, I forget what weapon he has. That's what I was looking for. Oh, did he have a weapon? He might have. He gave me a melee weapon. That's sometime. right. Well, let's let's just treat it. I can't imagine punching. anything I would have given you is better. Yeah, roll a uh, roll a strength plus d twenty plus strength for Max. Okay, um, with advantage, right? Yeah, yeah. So roll well, two. Well, my first take one was better. a nineteen, so I assume that's. Gonna... Well, you could roll the second one to see if you get a twenty. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So it hits, uh, and then for me, roll d six plus strength. D six. Uh, five. Uh, Max punches him so hard he dies. <laughs> so, you know. Um, Max doesn't know his own strength, I guess. Or maybe this is the intended result. Unclear. Okay. Um, He'll punch you, you apart. Just, we'll He'll punch you that. apart. <laughs> maybe he, like, uh, hit the machine on the way down or something. Maybe. No, Max hit him and he died on contact. Okay. Uh, and then he falls to the ground. <laughs> um, he was already, you already electrocuted this man. What was your intent? <laughs> 
I don't know, to, uh, to make him unconscious? Yeah, well, he's dead. Uh, it's too late. 15-year-old's <laughs> going through a lot of early life trauma. It's okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hey. That That is a decision you can make usually in D&D, &D, though, to not kill somebody when you drop them to zero hit points. I have never played it that way. I believe that. Yeah. You uh, can make the choice to just leave them alive but unconscious. This person is dead. <laughs> this person is dead. Fair enough. Well, I think the decision is made. If I had the electricity, if that was going through it and I was still in control, I would be able to decide that more so than my robot yeah, doing yeah, it yeah. for me. I mean, so we've home fine. gamed it so far in the previous two campaigns that when someone hits zero, they die. That's how we played it for 25 episodes. So I'm going to say that's consistency. Um, I like that. But people die in my world. <laughs> Um, oh fuck! <laughs> oh fuck! All right, Lexi, would you like to move? Uh, who's what's close to me? There's uh, Polly and Rusty and Mamba are converging on one guy in the back, and there's a guy on the left that Ryan's about to be up against, on the other side of the machine. Um, so I'm probably close to Ryan. Okay, uh, you can. So I I want Max to move, and I'm gonna be kind of um, like uh. I'm not crawling under the machine. I'm short enough where I'm kind of squat moving so I can kind of be undercover. Okay. Uh, so we can kind of like inch over that way. You are uh, able to do so and you can get within five feet of this person. We'll get within um, 10 for now. Okay, sounds great. So that we're not like too up right in the space because yeah. we want we want to like wait for a movement and then come in. Okay, right on. Uh, up next is Ryan, who is going to, uh, again, create a glob and throw uh, at this guy. That hits. Does 10 damage. Okay, Ryan. This guy's looking bad. Um, and uh, this song also slaps. Uh, Mamba, it's your turn. All right, so I had two things. Uh, so... Probably like the same question that Danny asked you about the brink. Do you think it's more of like a passive or like active ability? Sorry, say that again. I genuinely wasn't listening. For, That's on for me. the brink, so like for my brink, what Danny asked you, is it more of a uh, passive or active ability, do you think? I think you have to activate it, but then it's movement based. Uh, uh... Okay. Like you have to use an action to activate it the first time, or maybe that's a bonus action for you. So for you, it's a bonus action to activate, and then uh, it's movement based. So it's not an action to use it. Okay. Uh, second thing, uh, can you describe the layout of the uh, little arena that we're in? The yes, you're like you're like ten feet from the guy. The machine sort of hangs a little bit off the ground to your left. Um, and, uh, Rusty and Polly are coming in from behind from the stairs. Uh, the stairs, there's like right in between the machine and the stairs. There's like 10 feet there. Mm. Polly and Rusty here, you're on the side and the guy's right here. Um, and then, uh, the warehouse itself is quite open. Um, and there are lights above and this one guy who's not doing great on the other side. All right. So it's, so it's pretty, it's pretty well lit in the room where you are. Yes. All right. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna be well since I know that they're there are they are converging in on this like last guy I'm gonna look to him and say well it's not gonna be me that's taking care of you and I'm actually going to uh, well depending on like where the light is cast I'm actually gonna dash for his shadow okay and I'm gonna activate my brink shadow pool the pool of shadows and which allows me to uh, kind of manipulate the space and any shadow that is cast to create an empty space for me to slip in and out of. Uh, so I can actually take a bonus action here uh, to hide and just completely hide in, in the enemy's shadow. Oh, okay, this is this is Veril. No, not really. No, no, no. See, because... I, I thought of that. I thought of that, and then we kind of, you know. You'll see why, you'll see why. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you slip in, you slip in. I almost said Hadok because you said Vero. Uh, you slip in Mamba, and you are in the room. 
uh, that your vision was in, uh, and you're, you have the various, like, doors to open to go in and out. Mm. Um, so you're within that space. Um, yeah. Is there any way that I can make sense of, like, what's going on outside, or do I, would I, I have to, like, physically can, open a door? I think you can peek out the doors, and your head would, like, peek up out of the shadow. <laughs> what did, what did we just witness? You watched him fall into the ground. <laughs> We heard him exclaim something first, so we just have to assume. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. but I'm actually going to well, I mean like I'm like my guy's like bleeding and he got sliced and he got shot, so that's why I'm doing this. So he's gonna take a little bit of a break, but he will peek out one of the doors just to see what else is going on. Okay. Um yeah, I mean it's exactly the same as was described. I mean I mean just, just so we can like, you know, make sense of like everyone else doing things. You know? Oh, yeah, 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 I gotcha, I yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Uh, is that your turn? So he's like hiding, hiding, yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay, sweet. Um, Rusty, it's your turn. All right, um, well, I was gonna help out Mamba, and then they disappeared. So I guess I kind of just sit there and blink for a moment, and then turn my attention to the nearest attacker, and I'm just gonna go and lunge, and we're gonna bite some ankles. That's what we're Great. gonna do. All right. Does a 13 hit? No. Oh. Swing and a miss. Uh, in that case, I will use help as a reaction again for Polly again when their okay. turn comes up. And that'll be it. Nice. Uh, chance. Who's left? Uh, there's the guy that Rusty and Polly are engaging in the back, and then there's the guy you threw the mug at who's not doing great. Oh, I'm definitely going to throw another mug at him. I told him I was going <laughs> to. Man of your word. <laughs> So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do one of these numbers and just. <laughs> Couldn't hear Perfect. any of that, but I like. Chuck it around the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how, uh, how do so we yeah, do this roll D twenty plus Dex plus proficiency? Okay. You've got Go, so going forward, are these fights gonna be designed again? for four or five people? Uh, what? <laughs> uh, what did you roll? I it's, I didn't hit. We'll just put it that way. Okay, it was yeah, I mean, you are not throwing, on that one, you, so I didn't hit myself with the mug. DM. Okay, you're, you're throwing coffee mugs. I mean, I don't know what you are trying to expect here, but I just want to. I want to help, but I'm scared. You are helping. <laughs> I mean, if you hit, it would be helping. I didn't though. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it could. That's it could. the important part. Um. Yeah. All right. I assume you duck back around the corner. Yeah. Uh, all right. It is. Can the, I taunt him again? Sure. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to do the whole thing. I'm just gonna roll it. Okay. Uh, he succeeds. Ah, oh, damn it. Fuck you. Yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> uh, this is a good one though. Uh, he is then going to uh, attempt to shoot at Ryan. Miss. Uh, and the guy at the back is gonna try to hit Rusty with a knife. Okay. Rusty does an 11 hit you. Negative. Affirmative. Uh, and then that's it. So that's their turn. And we go now Good to Polly. How tall are the ceilings? Taller like than you, meatball. 30, <laughs> 30 feet. Okay. Mm. Are the ceilings flat? No, it's a... It's a roof. That's what they call that. Okay. <laughs> In academia cool. vaulted. <laughs> Thank you. Um, there uh, are light fixtures hanging, but they're like fluorescent light fixtures hanging from chains. So I don't know that you'd want to put your weight on that, but you know, mm -hmm. it's up to you. Okay. How high is the roof above the guy that's near me? The same answer. Oh, well, you said it was a slope. So like, is it 30 feet? Right, but you're in the middle. You're in the middle. Okay, got it. Cool. Uh, well, I'm going to... I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit of gravity shmavity again. Okay. And uh, I'm gonna th just hurl this guy upwards, straight up at two times gravity. And it's a it's a 30 foot radius centered on him is the area of effect. So he's hitting he's hitting the ceiling with two times fall damage, basically worth of worth of momentum. Yeah, give me a second. Do, 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 do. 
but it's it, he has to roll uh, against uh, twelve wisdom. He fails. Uh, okay, v squared equals zero squared plus two times negative. I think nineteen point six uh, times. This man's doing math. Uh, thirty feet. Math What's is 30 illegal. Feet in meters. You can just do like sixty feet of fall damage, can you? No, but I want to do it this way because I think it's funny. <laughs> I, I want to know how fast he's moving. <laughs> Square root of two times nine times nineteen point six. Holy shit! <laughs> okay, uh, he's moving. S <laughs> By the time he hits it, he's moving sixty feet a second. Uh, by the time he hits the ceiling. That's uh, a lot of feet. Uh, I mean, he's... Hit, both his legs break instantly. Um, and his spine shatters. Uh, <laughs> and he's on the ceiling, like... <gasps> just, like, laying on the ceiling, unsure of what is happening. Um, and then I dispel it. Uh, and then he falls back down. And uh, if A is divided by two, then it's a factor of four. So it's about, I mean, he falls again at like 15 feet a second and hits the ground and is dead. I mean, this man is dead. No, I bolt out of the way because I was pretty close. <laughs> I'm just yeah, like... you're you're able to clear <laughs> out of the way. Uh, and just to expedite the process, uh, I Ryan is just going to go ahead and scoop the guy and make another grave for this individual. He had two health left. Uh, he's just going to... They're, they're going to scoop out the floor and scoop another grave onto this person. Um, yeah. I run around the corner and start stomping <laughs> on the concrete above the guy <laughs> while flipping off the concrete with both hands. <laughs> yeah, nice. Ryan's like, Chance, where were you? Uh... You kept like ducking doing in my thing, then... man. Okay, all right. He's doing my thing. Okay, that's yep. fine. That's fine. Um, and uh, that's everybody. Um, we're gonna take a, sh a short break. Uh, so we're gonna take a, a, a brief break here. Don't go anywhere. We will have more speedrunners and dragons in just a moment. We're just gonna take a second to get some water, use the restroom, etc. Don't go anywhere. Hello everyone and welcome back to Campaign 3, Episode 3 of Speedrunners and Dragons. We are here with all the gamers, and uh, they just had a successful combat encounter against a bunch of henchmen, a bunch of goons, uh, uh, with guns, etc, etc, um, and uh, in a warehouse. And now we can change the music to something a little more subdued. Okay. So now all these guys are either dead, suffocating under the ground, or are uh, 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 unconscious in the back office. And you're in this room with this massive, weird-looking mechanism, like machine thing, that you have no idea what it is. Um, and uh, there are, you know, like welding tools and things around. Okay. Um... Uh, can I take any of them? <laughs> Yeah, you can take some. Uh, you can take some blow torches, and uh, we'll say you can take a, a blow torch and um, a, a, a a welder's mask and a soldering iron. I don't know how to spell that. <laughs> uh, S O L D E R I N G space iron. Oh. Hey, if out of game, do, would you like the people underground to be dead and inaccessible to us? Or is there a chance that they are ah, not dead interesting. Yet? I understand why you would say that. Yes, they are dead and inaccessible to they you. They ran out of air pretty okay. quick. Yeah, there's not much in there. Uh, okay. Yeah, an interesting thought. But no, there is a guy alive, though. There is one alive In the fellow. office, yeah. Mm. I scurry up to Chance with a bolt, and I hand it to him like this chance you have a a, a a bolt from a friend <laughs> wait what i'm sorry uh rusty scurried up and handed you a bolt oh hell yeah um lexi will nice. come out from and under the machinery it. be like is it is it over 
Uh, Ryan's like, Ryan's putting their gloves back on and they say, uh, yeah, it's over. Okay, uh, okay. And then she's gonna look over to the guy that they just, Max just murdered and be like, um, okay. So, uh, what, self-defense, right? Are we gonna be liable? I don't know, I, I don't, I didn't uh, expect Ryan, this at my age. Ryan puts their hands on your shoulder, on your shoulders and says, uh, God, what would you say in a moment like yeah, this? Yeah, she's like, um, like kind of light panic right now. They say, uh, they say, look, in situations like this against hostile brink users or people who oppose us, it's us or them. And I know that sucks. I know that sucks. But it's what we have to do because there are greater causes here that we're working towards. And it's never going to get easier. But this is just what it is. But murder? Doesn't that make us as bad as them? I pat her on the head and say, it's okay, there are no witnesses. <laughs> it's like, Ryan, Ryan shoots you a really dirty look uh, <laughs> and then says, then says, uh, whether you, whether that's, whether that's a character judgment is up to you. Okay. Ollie's going to just silently go back up the stairs and see if that guy's still unconscious. Uh, he's unconscious still, yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna drag drag him by the collar just down the stairs so his feet doom, like doom, clank doom, on doom, everyone. Doom, doom, doom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that'll that'll uh, get Lexi's attention for now because that's really loud. Uh, and I'll say, Yo, Ryan, could you do a little concrete thing with this guy to keep him in, in place? <laughs> uh, Ryan says, Sure. Uh, and they remove their gloves and put him up against a pillar and use concrete to form handcuffs out of the pillar. Uh, that are adjoined to the pillar, so there's like no chance uh, this guy is getting free. Um, and then uh, they put their gloves back on. I, uh, I kind of, kind of lightly, kind of in the middle, slap him across the face, try to wake him up. Ugh. Ugh. And he looks up at you guys uh, and uh, says, says. What the hell happened? You are not asking questions here. And he just looks around silently. He says, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I he's going to be like kind of inspecting the electrocuted body. To, you just got to like take a moment with that. Sure. We'll be kind of over on the side and then we'll probably look around at the machinery. Okay. This is coming on. I'm gonna look at the, look at my my group of new friends, say, this piece of shit, and his friends killed my sister. She was 15. Ryan says, "What?" Shocked Pikachu Wait, face. What? That's not cool. Were I got witnesses? attacked in my own restaurant. That's Wait. how I ended up here. Ryan says, uh. Who, did you see someone? Did you see who did this? Yeah. This guy had nothing behind his eyes. He was insane. He stabbed her to death. Was this the killer? Same person, I think. This guy went to your restaurant and, I'm sorry to bring it up, killed your sibling? Yeah, and the other one only barely got out in time before I got there. Um, Lexi knew them as well, right? Uh, not really, because you didn't go to the same school, I don't think. Right? Or, yeah, you did, but you did. You weren't really friends with them, but you knew of them. They, yeah, I knew of them. They'd be in a different grade, right? Right. Okay. Um, and, uh, they, uh, Ryan says, uh, I don't know if, if they were trying to send a message or what. Maybe your sister was brink sensitive or something. Or maybe they were trying to get access to you. I'm not sure. How would they know that I was going to go there? He I didn't have to do I, that. I don't know. I don't know. I turn and I turn to the guy who's cuffed to the pillar. And I say, what do you guys want? What was the point of that? You better give me a good answer. He says, I'm just following orders, man. I was told to be at a place at a time and capture anybody that interfered. Was it you who took me from, from that bu bu building? Yes. And you didn't see what happened? 
You didn't see that guy do what he did? I saw a man run away, but I didn't see what happened before. You gonna give us as much information as you got for who hired you? And he looks up at those of you that are there, and Ryan crouches down next to him and uh, takes off their gloves again and forms a spike out of concrete, then puts their gloves on, and then finds, like, a chain and uh, uh, asks you, Polly, to sling the chain over one of the, the bars above. Okay. Do I have to roll for that, or can I no, just do no, it? No, no, no. Okay. Uh, so you swing the chain over the bar, and then Ryan dips their finger into the thing and puts the chain in and then releases, and it, like, combines. And then they hoist the spike aloft above the guy's head and just hold it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. And they go, should answer the guy's question. Uh, and the guy's like, uh, <clears throat> I work for, uh, <clears throat> I work for Riley. If that means anything to you. And do you think you're going to continue to work for Riley after today? I don't really have any preconceived notions about what's about to happen to me. Can I check his pockets while he's <laughs> changing? Yeah, sure. Right. Um, do you have anything good in there? Uh, you find an envelope. Mm -hmm. um, and the envelope is uh, uh, has like technical specifications on it. And uh, opening the envelope, you see there's some kind of schematic inside. Oh, okay. Uh, and then also you're able to pocket... Um, he had like 50 cents in loose coins. Yo! <laughs> Very excited about the pocket change. Oh. Um... Uh, I shove the schematics into Lexi's hand. You know more about this than I do. Okay, I'm still kind of I'm still kind of over by the machinery. I yeah, yeah, walk he, he over and give it to, over you. Hands it to you. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna um, huddle with it on the ground. She's not feeling too good. Okay. Um, and uh, we'll accept it though. <laughs> the guy says, "Is that is that it?" I don't know if he's brain sensitive, but I like climb up onto his chest and I say, "Listen, this kind of this kind of stuff requires motivation. What are you doing?" I don't know if you can hear me, but I'm just I'm being a rat and I'm being angry at him. <laughs> um, he is brain sensitive, not brain capable, though. You gather, um, and he says, uh, he looks at you and he says, "Why does anybody do anything?" Money's not enough, a strong enough answer for me. Try again. He says, I don't know what to tell you. Maybe I some just, people are just bad. Think. Would you put yourself in that category? I don't think I have a lot of options. In my particular line of work, this is what it is. If you're going to kill me, you better fucking kill me. Where can we find your boss? I don't know. And you're gonna have to take me in my word for that. I, uh, I slap Ryan's hand so he drops the chain. Uh, Ryan drops the chain for a second. But then I it, catch it. it like, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, and it's, I, I was gonna catch it. Then goes, ah! <laughs> Uh, and he goes, uh, he goes, I don't, I don't, I don't know. We get orders via phone. We get, we get messages from encrypted numbers. I don't know. We just have places to be and things we have to do. Where's your phone? It's, uh, uh it's up in the office. I, uh, I scamper off to the office. Uh, you're, you're able to find the phone. How close um, is the spike now to this guy's HUD? Uh, uh, Ryan starts hoisting it again. Okay. Um, now that it was lowered, it was like six inches. Okay. But yeah, they, they, they start, they start hoisting it again and it, it goes back up. Uh, and, um, they're holding it again. They're like, Polly, man, my hand slipped there. It was a close one. I know. It'd be a shame if that were to happen again. Listen, dude, you're not for this guy, guys, Riley's cause. You like money. I understand. I like money too. I work at a restaurant. I like money. Everybody likes money. I love this money. This is not worth dying over. Is there money? 
I, I sorry. take out sorry I take out sorry a, bad time. I take out a fresh hundred dollar bill from my wallet, and I, <laughs> I I say you can walk out of here right now with this if you just tell me anything I try and you take got. It from your hand. While... <laughs> if you knew if you knew of what this guy was capable. You wouldn't say anything either. Either way, I'm a dead man. I got nothing left. And he looks up at Ryan and he says, are you going to do it or what? And Ryan looks at you, Polly. Uh, I, I just, I knock him out. All right, uh, you knock him out and he falls unconscious. And uh, Ryan yanks the chain to get the concrete to fall over on the other side. And Ryan says, I was gonna let you make that call, but this is the decision I would have made. Uh, and uh, they say, we have holding cells at B division. We can take him there. Okay. About that $100. <laughs> is that still on the table? Or like, was that just like, can I have it? Polly? I'm gonna keep this one. Thank you. Thank you. Where are you keeping it? Uh, it's somewhere on my what person. What pocket do you put your wallet in? <laughs> this one. I show him. Oh, okay. Just wanted to be sure. <laughs> um, I'm, I have to really quickly go let someone in downstairs. Uh, okay. So I will be right back. Um, I don't know. We'll do this old school style. Talk about speedrunners and dragons or optionally have an in-character conversation. Either of these things, perfectly fine. Improv. Uh, Improv. Yeah, this is going to be a very squishy segment, though. I'll be right back. Okay. I think Max is going to help um, Lexi up, I guess. Because I think he is enough. I would assume, I was going to ask Adef, but I would assume he kind of has enough intelligence to... To, like she's taught him manners. Mm -hmm. um, he would bend down and go there, there, yeah, yeah, there, yeah, there, exactly. there, or, there, like, just over and over and again, up. there, there, yeah. there, <laughs> there. <laughs> Consolation mode. I'll just say up, and yeah. he can get me up. Um, and then she's gonna like hold on to him and walk over to you all. And Mom I will look Lexi over. Will... Hey, you all right, kid? You look pretty beat. I mean, you know, we just murdered a few people. Well, so, I didn't. You're right. I didn't do any of that. I was outside. I didn't do that at all. You murdered somebody. That was crazy. <laughs> all right, let's not try <laughs> to make her feel any What the hell is wrong with you? What? I was, you, were you were there? It's been a very stressful day. It's a very stressful couple of days. I think she'll look at... Ollie as well and be like thank you for not adding to that uh sorry about that uh my friends needed in and i obviously moved my cameras because they don't yeah, want to be seen on screen middle of the conversation in character sorry guys uh you know what i'm gonna turn my camera back off uh have fun i'm listening uh richard <laughs> remove me from the remove me <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna go around and, and, and gather phones off of the remaining dead people if they have them. Um, cause we never know who will get the next message, I guess. Mm -hmm. I'll see what you're doing and I'll offer to join because I think Lexi would be like, um, I can hack those, you know. Oh. I pass them all off there. Okay. Um, I asked I like Ryan if he can, if he can scoop out the the dudes that he put underground to see if they got anything. Uh, say that they can do that. Uh, and they, they scoop the phones. Scoop the phones. Scoop How many the phones, phones we have? What was that, Danny? How many phones we got? Six phones. It's like a regular Apple store over here. You got six phones. I turned um, to Alexi. Like, they're like shitty, like ten, you know, $20 Android phones you would get at like a marketplace or something like they're not I am yeah. burners yeah Max exactly gonna hold the schematics and I will take the phones okay I asked Lexi if uh those phones got any messages on them uh it might take me a bit to find out I don't think 
staying here would be safe to do all that right now. Uh, Ryan agrees, and Ryan thinks that uh, they're like, I've already called the van, um, so the, the we'll be picked up in a second here. Uh, any last things you guys want to do? Also, Richard, if you could kill my camera for a second again. There you go. the bodies search them <laughs> that's a very chance answer i would expect nothing less that we did i think we just got the, all the phones i don't know if we were searching for anything else though gucci we gucci we gucci um all right did anything else happen besides just getting the uh getting the phones was did anything else of note happen in that conversation that i missed uh no. I'm, I'm just having like a mental crisis lexi <laughs> thing <thanked. laughs> <laughs> Lexi thanked Polly for not murdering the guy. I did thank mm. him for not. What murdering did Polly him. say? Polly, what did you say? Oh, you, you, you came down. in right at that moment, so I, I didn't say anything. Uh, but, what uh, would you have said? I, I would have said, "Don't thank me yet, little girl." There's a lot of rage coming out with, the, with what just happened to my family. Right on. Okay. Um. All right. So uh, Ryan makes a phone call. Um, and they're calling, you know, somebody at B Division, evidently, uh, to, to come pick you, get you know, the van that you all, except for Polly, arrived in, uh, to come pick you guys up. Uh, and as Ryan's making this call, uh, you suddenly hear, um, uh, uh, you're, uh, who's holding the guy? Who's holding the guy? Okay. The, I, the, I the guy you're going to take hostage. Me. How are you holding him? Uh, over my shoulder, I guess. Okay. Um, a few ways you can carry a man, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, ooh, ooh. Like a hula uh, hoop. I've got him just cradled in my arms like a baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the... Uh, you hear from outside, come on out! Is that a familiar voice? No. Guys, come on. We know you're in there, you guys. Come on out. Who is it? Oh, no. You don't get to know that right away. Come on. You're like, you Rusty, can you get eyes on this? What'd you say, Lexi? The Rusty, can you get eyes on this? I peer around to see if there's a way to sneak outside without being seen. Like a window. Uh, oh. You're able, you can peek around the... Uh, the corner of the like uh, the entrance and see and there are four very interesting characters uh standing a hundred yards from the entrance up against a like just like a pickup truck um there is a short girl with short black hair and pigtails uh, and she's wearing like a pink skirt she has a pink backpack and she's blowing bubble gum and her legs are swinging and she's got like this devilish smile and she's wearing black sunglasses uh like sh At night. like 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 black like morbius sunglasses basically oh, no. um and then to the left of her is like this guy wearing a letterman's jacket um he's like crazily handsome uh, uh he's got this dark olive skin and uh short like crew cut football hair and he's leaning up against the truck, just like all cool, like also black sunglasses. There's like a skater dude next to him who's wearing a beanie and has long blonde hair that curls at the edge. And he's like holding a skateboard and just like, you know, swinging back and forth. And then there's this massive dude in like, like this ripped 40 year old man also wearing the black sunglasses, uh, uh, wearing like an army jacket. Uh, he's got camo on and count, uh, combat boots. And uh, it's the four of them. And the girl calls out again. She's like, come on, guys. Just come out. I, I walk out. In. I, I, I peek back in and I say, if we're like, if we, I thought we were a Motley crew, but I think we're about to meet our rival gang here or something. These guys like, are wackos. Ryan, do you have any idea? Uh, Ryan says, I have no idea what's happening. I'm going to go talk to him. <laughs> and I stride out the door confidently. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, and, uh, she goes, you're here. I'm here. 
Uh, and um, she says, no, you're cute. You're cute looking. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Who are you? Where's everybody else? Oh, they're inside. Uh, Mamba's gonna, Mamba's gonna creep on out with his uh, machete in his right hand. Oh, there's Mamba. That's the machete uh, guy. We got a machete guy. Mamba, you instantly recognize the guy on the far right. Um, uh, he is uh, an old OMA recruiter and commander. Um, uh, you just know him as Colonel. Mm. Colonel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you did that on purpose, eh, Dev, you son of a gun. I actually didn't. I know very little Metal Gear lore, if that's a thing. <laughs> oh, it sure is. Oh, uh, he well, totally is. Yeah, no, that was not yeah. intentional, but that's his name, and I already chose it, so there you go. Well, Mama's going to slowly walk up to the colonel. Oh, what? This is 100 <laughs> yards. This is 100 yards, by the way. I don't know. He's, he's walking up to the colonel. He, he's, he's beeline, but he's like not with like an intent to an attack. I see Crying. you walk by me and kind of like, surprise and spring to catch up and I'm walking with you not realizing that you're like super pissed just like oh we're gonna go say hi uh you're walking up to this guy yeah um when you get within about 20 yards no within like 10 yards so like 30 feet um the guy with the letterman's jacket who had his hands in his pockets pushes himself off the truck with his back and steps in front of the group and looks at you and tilts his head and he says, I wouldn't get any closer. He's gonna go ahead and point the machete at, at the guy with the letterman's jacket. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> hey. Hey. He's, he's just gonna like motion over like, where's your rat? Excuse me? Oh, come on. Like, like, like we, we obviously know what's going on here. Where's your rat? My rat? Right. Well, you would call him like what, like bunny or something like that. I'm. I'm sorry. I don't. Am I, I supposed to have a rat? I scamper between Mamba's <laughs> legs and like, yeah, you're rat. What do you? Why? What's so hard to understand? Are we? I don't. Is this a joke? Yo, Rusty. I bend down and lend out my hand to climb up. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna redirect the machete to a uh, colonel if possible and just be yeah. like, looks like you're the only one that can make sense around here. What's going on? Uh, colonel has his arms crossed. Rusty, do um, you have any idea what the hell is going on right now? No, man, I, I've never seen these people before. This is really I mean, weird. Me neither. They seemed really friendly, but now I'm scared. <laughs> if this was a Pokemon game, I think these are arrivals or something. Oh, shit. I've never played that game, but that sounds cool. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I th it, it looks kind of cute, but... Is that on the Game Boy? I have one of those in my pocket. It actually came out in 1996. <laughs> 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 um, Maybe while I... that's happening, like, Lexi wants to look at... Um, Holly's still with us, right? And Ryan. Yeah, yeah. Um, Maybe look at both of them and be like... we reveal ourselves? Ryan says, uh, if the three of them are out there, I have a duty to protect you guys. I'm going out. Um, and Ryan takes off their gloves preemptively and puts them in their pockets and walks out. Like but as, as they do, the they most? turn around. They turn Daddy around to you, Lexi, and they're like, uh, "They're like, you don't have to follow if you don't want." I trust you the most, though, so far. Right, but you can hide in here if you want. No, she'll come out, um, kind of halfway behind Mag. Okay. She wants to stick kind of near Ryan because he seems to have done the most, the fastest. And yeah, yeah. she likes that he wants that they want to protect everybody. Sorry. Sweet. Uh Polly. I'm also I'm gonna follow him. I'm gonna keep the guy slung over my shoulder. Actually. Okay. No. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave him sitting down just inside the door. So okay. that he's out of sight. Okay. Um you uh you all walk out. Now it's just a proper standoff, basically. Uh and Colonel is looking at uh at Mamba and says, Codename Mamba, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. And he just looks to the side, sort of off into the distance. So are you guys going to say something or like, why are you here? And she says, oh, is that a robot? She's like, "What? Wow, that's so cool. 
Oh, guys, this is great. This is fun. You guys are so fun. This is really fun. That didn't answer my question. And the guy sort of looks around and he says, uh, That's Kyoko. My name's Kevin. That's Howard. And, uh, <clears throat> you seem to already be acquainted with Colonel somehow. Look, guys, we don't want to make this a whole thing, but, uh, you know, we are here to kill you. Um, and, uh, you know, I got practice tonight, so if we can make this quick, uh, I gotta be back with my boys pretty quick here. Um, tournament's coming up, so, you know. Uh, worth noting, other descriptions. Kyoko is an indiscernible age. Uh, she could be 12, she could be like 25, but she's terrifying. Like, there's something so off-putting about her energy. Like, um, um that girl from, uh, um, Kill Bill. Yes, uh... Okay. Whose name is... Yeah, I know, I can't remember either. That's what I'm thinking of right now. Ah! It's gonna bug me too, because I know which one, yeah. Go go. I thought it was go, just go go. Go go. It? It's yeah. totally go go. Um, uh, so there's Kyoko, and then um, uh, 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 this guy Kevin, uh, who is clearly like 18. Um, and then uh, Howard is like a 24 year old deadbeat, uh, and Colonel might be 40 or 50. Um, and uh, uh, worth noting, Mamba, you don't really know anything about Colonel. You just know he's with, like, he, at some point at least, was with OMA. Right. Um, uh, and uh, <laughs> they all have bracelets on, but their bracelets are black. <gasps> I don't know that I ever told you guys your bracelets are, like, a white with, like, blue highlights. Oh, I'm okay. Mm. Cute. Um, and theirs are black with red highlights. Very obvious. Yeah, well, <laughs> look, just because I like to do nuanced stuff doesn't mean I can't succumb to my favorite tropes. <laughs> Please do. Um, uh, and holding the phones. Yeah, 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 the phones. Interesting. Um, anyway, Kevin steps forward and is like, yeah, Riley wants this to be fast. He said you guys are taking too long for everything and the hit at the restaurant didn't go as planned. It's just time to finish this, I think. Uh, you're muted again, Polly. Kevin is the handsome guy or the yeah, the handsome guy? the handsome teenager. Okay. And he sort of seems to be the leader, de facto leader of the group. Uh and he uh <laughs> he says he turns to his group, turns his back to you guys, and looks at his group and he says, uh, do you want to do this four on, or do you just want to do one at a time? Like, it's more fun that way. You know, give it a shot. Uh, like a tournament. Uh, and he turns back and he's like, no, 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 you don't get to choose things. Uh, and then turns back and is like, Colonel? And the Colonel's like, yeah. And he yeah. just unzips his jacket and pulls it off and he's fucking ripped. Like, massive jacked dude with like white chest hair all across the top of his chest and down uh, the center and he's wearing the like you know the like in left for dead street fighter shit yeah he's a <laughs> guy all over here um and uh he steps forward in front of them and he turns his bracelet and he says thousand flames and his body is engulfed in flame uh, and, uh, if everybody could roll... Actually, we'll use the pre-existing initiative rolls. So you don't have to roll anything. Oh. <laughs> and... We're gonna change the music. Question. Does me yes. being unconscious count as a rest? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, because it wasn't restful in any way. We're into the boss playlist, baby. Um, okay. So, uh, he is going to step forward and, um, he rushes at Mamba and Mamba, he attempts to sock you in the chest. Like he's going for like an into your stomach. 
Does an 18 hit you? Yep. Oh, sorry. That's not an 18. That's a 24. I, oh. oh. <laughs> okay, then. Inferno mode? Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> uh, 14. You take 17 damage. He is down. He just like flies in like way faster than a man this size should be able to move. He did? And flames erupt behind uh, Mamba's body as the punch contacts. A burst of flame uh, and Mamba falls to the ground unconscious. <laughs> I love that. Um, uh, and then he sort of readies his hands again and looks up. And since we're going from that slot in the order, it's Polly next. Um, all right. Well, Polly, is, are we in a completely open space here? Yeah, completely open. What's the weather like? Uh, it's cloudy and it's evening. Okay. Hmm. I mean, Polly's definitely rushing in. I yeah. don't think there's much much else I can do aside from just trying to punch this guy. Okay. That is an 11 to hit. Uh, that does not hit. Okay. Uh, you swing and the colonel just dodges very, like, artfully. Is he still on fire? Yeah. Okay. His whole body is engulfed in flame. Right. Uh, is that your turn, Polly? That's all I got. Okay, uh, Lexi, it's your turn. Oh, Lord. Okay. Um, if she would do anything right now, I don't know. I, I know. That's honestly the thing I've been thinking about. Like, what, what do? Um, she's at least going to prepare herself. I assume all the phones are still on from the workers. Maybe one of broken, but I assume. Yeah, 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 sure. They're on. She's going to take the energy from the phones because that's the closest source of electricity she has. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, so she's going to be draining out the phone. There's, is there anything else near her? Like, like the, not really. Well, there's no, they're in a car, right? They're like she's sitting on the back. Kyoko is sitting on the back of the car. Yeah. The three of them are up against a car. Uh, what would you like Max to do? Uh, Max will be in defense mode. Okay. Just completely um, blocking her. Sure. Because, um, uh, oh no. Up next and, is and, Ryan. Yeah, what's up? Where's Mamba? Mamba is... Uh, in my mind, you guys were in a line, and Mamba had come to the front, uh, uh, slightly ahead, but like on the far right side, and is just collapsed right there. Can you use your electrical engine as a defibrillator for Mamba? Cool. His heart's not. Stopped, His heart's not it? stopped, but that's cool. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't think that would help in this instance, but in the future. He um, got socked in the gut. Yes. When, I, when I die again, <laughs> shock his heart. <laughs> um, it's Ooh. Ryan's turn, and Ryan sees this as like, we're in, we're in deep shit. Uh, Can you put them underground again? Uh, Ryan's like that only works on idiots, uh, and then. Uh, they what do they want to do what do i want to do um i feel like this is you trying to dance around the fact that you made this enemy do 17 damage yes. on the opening <laughs> punch and i didn't make over. them do anything i they uh -huh. rolled that oh uh-huh um i'll let you know i have 13 health yeah it is it. okay Period. Uh, I'm not pulling punches in campaign three. Oh. I'm not futzing anything this time. Mm -hmm. um, oh, God. People die in ADEF's world. No. Yes. People die in the real I'm world. Uh, ADEF's world is the real world. I don't want any more yeah. Persona 3, okay? <laughs> uh, Ryan shoves their hands in the ground. And... Uh, like you feel an inordinate amount of brink energy come out of them like they're doing some kind of special basically uh and they they start 
sloshing concrete into this massive wall uh, just in between Mamba and uh, Colonel. And then they run and snag Mamba. And like, you had no idea Ryan could even carry Mamba. Ryan slings Mamba onto their shoulder and they're like, we're getting the fuck out of here. The van is one block north. I am already gone. I um, saw the punch and... <laughs> she's actually faster than Lexi, so she's going to jump on his back again. And okay, yeah, he's... Yeah. Uh, and uh, Rusty, you are on Chance's shoulder. Mm-hmm. Um, and Polly, what are, what are you doing? You're muted, by the way, if you want. Okay, there you go. Yeah, I was within punching range of this guy. Am I on the good side or the bad side of the wall? We'll say the good side of the wall. Okay. That's merciful of you. Thank yes. you. Yes, it is. Ryan, yeah. let me block you off. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, Ryan then uh, uh, looks back at you guys and is just like, go, 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 go. And as you start booking it, uh, Ryan turns back over their shoulder. And those of you who also turn just see a flaming fist burst through the wall uh, and then kick. Boom, and the wall shatters at the middle and the guy's like pushing through. Um, and then uh, you you hear Kyoko laughing in the distance. She's like, <laughs> this is so stupid. Uh, and then um, you see Kevin leap the wall, pull, pull himself up and over and plops down and rolls and then starts booking it after you guys. Uh, and uh, uh, Howard comes around on the skateboard and is is pushing off the skateboard to try to catch up to you guys. Um, and uh, Ryan turns around and is like, if you have anything you can do during this while we're running away, now's the time. Um, and they just like uh, free their hand and every once in a while scoop down and just pick up a little bit of concrete at a time with their fingers and just start throwing it backwards. Um, but, uh, yeah, they, they're like, if there's anything you can do, now's the time. I drop my wrenches all across where we're going to mess with the <laughs> skateboard. Um, it, like, works. Uh, the... <laughs> <laughs> it, like, works. I love uh, it. <laughs> question mark? Howard, you gather, is, like, not the brightest. Um, and the, he's like, whoa, bro. And then the skateboard hits the wrenches and he like tumbles, but does a cartwheel out, grabs the skateboard. And is like, guess I'm going on foot, bros. And just keeps <laughs> running. Um, and there's like maybe 40 feet in between you guys. Uh, and you hear, uh, you hear Kevin say, Howard, please make yourself useful. And Howard's like, uh, what do you want? And Kevin's like, a bike and so howard's like all right man and he tosses the skateboard just like into the river and then uh <laughs> turns the bracelet and says spot the difference or he says spot the difference bro and then he just says bicycle and he turns into a bike <laughs> <laughs> uh he becomes a bike and then uh kevin hops on and just starts pedaling for dear life he's like couldn't make it fucking electric and then just starts like pedaling and is like really starting to gain on you guys. I um, have a bargain for you, Adef. Okay. I have a thing in my class called untiring, which means I get advantage on exhaustion avoidance saves. And exhaustion is not really something that we've ever done when we play together. That's true. But I am offering you the opportunity to Ooh, allow me far to too use much my power. brink one extra time with the possibility of being exhausted afterwards if I do not succeed on this uh, on the saving Basically, we've been throw. meeting that, that status well in this campaign. So. Um, we'll say that after the two after the two normal uses, you probably won't become. Also, is like the Spotify like low bit rate for anybody? It was weird for a second. It was it is, I'm getting a little bit of crackliness. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so am I. It's very strange. Um. So, uh, Maybe it's the track. If you use it further than the two times, every successive time, there is a 75% chance you will become exhausted, and then that percent chance increases by 
50% 50 of 75% or whatever the next number is. So the function yeah, yeah. is like 0.5 times x, x being 75 the first time. Yeah, uh, yeah. 0.5 times x plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's growing exponentially. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, towards, but never One. eclipsing 100%. Yeah. Um, I might reneg this, but... So, I mean, that basically means that I need to roll a 15 or higher. Yes. To not be exhausted, right? Yes, and then an 18, and then a 19. And then a 20. And we'll just do, you have to roll a 20 after that, every time. Okay. Or else um, instantly exhausted. Okay. Um, so I have I have advantage on those rolls because of my thing. Yeah, okay, then we're not doing this. <laughs> oh, that, get, that was... Yeah, no, no, okay, yeah, no, just two, just two, just two, just two. You'll, you'll unlock more as we go. All right. Fair enough. It was worth thinking about. It was I interesting. Tried. I had fun. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, the bike is now coming after you. So another question for you, yeah. Clay. Do you remember the other part of my brink that I told you about? I don't know if you ever looked at it. I mean, I certainly looked at it. Whether or not I remember is a whole other question. Let's see. Fair um, oh, cool. Yeah, I love that. It works? Yeah. Okay. So if I remember correctly, I can use my brink. I have gloves on. My name's Chance, right? Character's name's Chance. I have gloves on. One's a one and one's a six. They're die for a seven that you make with dice. And uh, the brink power is essentially I can make anything from my pocket appear within my eyesight wherever if I roll dice correctly, if I'm lucky enough to do it. Otherwise, you know, nothing happens. So the way I worked it out is that I roll a d6 seven times, and I have to roll both a one and a six within those seven times to make it successful. So I would like to try and make the uh, soldering iron appear in the spokes of the bicycle. Cool. So I'm gonna roll. Nice. I'm kind of sad time. you didn't try to solder something, but fine. This is you want me to solder the ability. spokes? I, I'm making it appear yeah. somewhere. I can't do it. No, I know it's fine. Uh, Come yeah, on. go ahead. Oh, you roll mean like in. later? I see what you mean. Yeah. Three, well, one. We, we got the one. Another one. A two. That's five rolls. I, can't I think count. that's four. four that's rolls. four rolls. Another one. A four. Come on. A oh, five. Damn. No good. I think... Oh, tough. No good. I tried. Right. You tried. For those of you that were looking on, it just looked like Chance was concentrating really hard for a second. Uh, and we'll say that in character, Chance is rolling a die. I think that's a fun... <laughs> just that's like a rolling fun, it on his hand. Yeah, on his hand. <laughs> <laughs> While sprinting at full speed. It didn't work. I'm sorry. Okay, so... But it's cool. Yeah. Uh, how close is the bike, you know? The, um, the bike and... is 20 feet behind you now, and you're almost to what Ryan claims is the rendezvous point. And okay. uh, Colonel is, like, losing steam, literally. Like, the fire is starting to dissipate as you're running. Uh, and he eventually slows down, and he's like, you guys got this. The bike's gaining. Yeah. Oh, uh, can we be screwed? Like, can you, can you bring the van? Ryan's like, it's already there! Bring it closer! And she's gonna be like, back stop! And he's gonna um, stop right in front of the bike so that it, like, he want, she wants him to stop it, like, right in front of the bike. Aren't you on, Max? Yes. So that it almost crashes into them. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes. Um, uh, Kevin... He's gonna reach out, but she's gonna jump down and squat and reach out for the bike. Okay. Kevin tries to avert around. He'll roll for that. He'll do an acrobatics check. Nah. Uh, and he skids out, and the bike falls flat, uh, and he tumbles, and then the bike turns back into Howard and also tumbles. Uh, and the two of them tumble to a stop. Howard is in front of Max. Kevin is getting up and starts running on foot again, uh, and is like 10 feet from you, Lexi. Oh no, I stopped to reach out for the bike. I'm confused. So Max stopped, so the bike had to, had to skid 
and she yes. jumps off of Max to reach out for the bike. Yes, this still puts you within 10 feet of the assailant. I don't understand what well, I'm missing. they stopped before. Okay. No, no, no. They got up to you. Okay. I'm, I'm so confused. <laughs> they rode the bike up to you and then skidded to a stop, fell. Yeah. Trying gonna, to uh, go around you. Just, she wants to touch Howard. Okay. Uh, sure. He's trying to electrocute somebody. Okay, Come on. I was so I didn't understand what was. You gotta <laughs> use your words. I don't okay. know what's happening. Um, all right. Uh, He's got roll... power built up, so she's just trying to stop them from. From the phones, we'll say uh, roll a d10 plus intelligence. Yeah, not gonna be much, but it thought it would stop them. A uh, five. Okay. Uh, Howard gets a shock. It's a great title for a book. Um, Howard, <laughs> Howard gets a shock, and then Baxter's like, whoa, man, hey, crazy, bro. She's Stat gonna jump back on Max, basically. Uh, and Howard's like, Kevin, bro, this sucks. <laughs> Kevin's like, you guys are all fucking useless to me. Uh, <laughs> and Kevin whips out his phone, and he's like, hey, Siri, call mom. Uh, and he's running after you guys, and he's only, like, within 10 feet of you. And uh, you hear, uh, um, he gets on the phone, he's like, hey, mom, I hate you. And then hangs up, turns his bracelet, and he says, uh, what is it called? What is I it called? love my mom. Uh, he says, bad influence. And you just feel, like, an overwhelming brink energy come out of this teenage boy. Uh, and he suddenly is way faster than before. Um, and he's like quickly gaining on you and he slides in and grabs Max by the ankle. Uh, can Max make a, you can do it as just a normal check, but can you do a, uh, dexterity saving throw? So roll, oh, wait, does he have saving throws? Um, let's find out. If not, we can just roll it as a normal check. It doesn't list saving throws for him. We just have the, our regular stats. Okay, yeah, roll a d20 and add dex. Okay. I'll roll against. A five. <laughs> yeah, uh, so he got an 11. Um, he grabs Max, and Max falls forward, and you tumble off, Lexi. Okay. And Lexi, can you make a strength save for me? Strength save. Ooh. Okay. Um, that's the 20 minus. For the 20. Yeah, D20 with whatever your saving throw modifier is. Four. Uh, you fall and take five damage. Uh, okay. on the just hitting the pavement so hard. Um, and you roll and your elbows are all scraped and bruised. Um, around you, uh, Mamba's out. Ryan's carrying Mamba at the front. Uh, Polly, you probably will have seen this happen, and you're like 10 feet ahead. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm not uh, letting another little girl die on my watch, so I'm going back. I figured as much. Uh, Kevin... And I tried uh, to stop him. Oh my god. Kevin then walks up to uh, to Lexi and starts collecting Brink energy in his fist. Uh, and he first... He punches down at Max. Uh, what is... I'm, I'm just gonna roll. Does a... I don't, I don't know if his armor class was supposed to have gone up when his size went up. So I did not adjust I don't it. know either. Uh, what yeah. was it before? It was 11 before. Let's say it's 12 now. Okay. Um, does... Okay, I mean, I just found out what it is. It does hit. Uh, actually, make it 13. Make it 13. Okay. Um, all right, that is a hit. Um, I also don't see a proficiency bonus for Max. I don't know if he gets that either. Maybe yours. Uh, he takes... Max takes 16 damage. 16? Yeah. He's out of commission. Okay. Uh, the fist... Poof, it Max, like, bursts at the chest. Yeah. He's like, did I help you? Yeah, so he's just out. <laughs> um, God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Why does and then he Kevin, have to have Kevin... this, like, emotional death right then and there? <laughs> yeah. Kevin... Kevin looks up and shakes the bolts off his hands and the oil, like, dripping off his hands. And then collects more Brink Energy in his fist is getting ready to hit Lexi. Um, like this, uh, I mean, sh I, can she... Yeah, you can you can get up and do something. React? So we've, we spoke separately about um, uh, emotional outpouring. 
Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and that's like her buddy and. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she... Um. Okay. In this moment, um, she's like experiencing heavy trauma. So she's like very emotional. There are street lamps to the side, and Polly, you begin to run towards Lexi, and as you do so, you notice all the street lamps on the sides of the street start flickering on and off, and Lexi's hair starts standing up on end, and the clouds are getting darker oh, above God, she's going in the Super sky. Saiyan. Um, uh, Lexi, can you... Obviously, we didn't talk about specifics. We didn't, because um, I did but... not think this would happen this early, so... Uh, could you roll a... I'm gonna sort of... I'm not gonna take your action for you, but yeah. I assume your intent is to hit Kevin. Um, uh, it's either it's either a hit or a block. Either way, it's... She's, she, I, I mean, you can... I, I would... I, would almost say you should take the action for me because I might be out of control. control. Okay, uh, please roll a d20 uh, with advantage and add intelligence. Okay, and add intelligence. Um, yeah. Nineteen. Um, sparks start arcing from Lexi to ground, um, and then uh, all of a sudden like a literally a bolt of lightning comes out of the ground and strikes her and then she just pushes her hands out and the lightning goes straight into kevin like blasts him in the chest and he flies into the sky like 50 feet away and is just flying tumbling through the air his clothes have burned he's singed um and you just see howard uh get up and um and he uh he goes uh he says, K -k 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 Colonel! And Colonel uh, is like, I don't want to do it twice. And then turns his bracelet again and says, Thousand Flames. And then runs and blasts himself off the ground and catches Kevin. And then lands back down, like superhero pose style, back onto the ground. And Kevin is like... I would say Lexi is probably just passed out. Yeah, you instantly pass out right away. You're, you're out. Um, I scoop her up as she falls. Yeah, she Great. like screamed. She was already on the ground because she had felt she had fallen off at max. And Polly, you're able to book it. Okay. Um, and uh, Ryan is like has just gotten back to you guys because in that time got Mamba into the car and then is like, what the fuck just happened? We got a regular Pikachu over here. <laughs> like, yes. You don't know anything. How do you know? That's a rat. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, and then uh, <laughs> runs and uh, or it's a mouse. Um, and throws open the van doors. No, 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 Rusty and Pikachu are both the same animal and Polly doesn't know what that is. Anyway, um, <laughs> throws, throws, Electricity you guys all get in the van. Polly throws the, uh, the doors shut, or pardon me, uh, uh, Ryan throws the doors shut and like bangs on the glass and the car. Was Max picked up, picked up or no? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Cool. Okay. <laughs> cool, guys. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, you made it out, and you're all alive. Um, and we'll say, uh, Mamba, you are stabilized in the car uh, by one of the medics um, mm. that is in Thank the goodness. van. Um, Wowie, by the skin of your teeth. These guys Wowie. don't mess around. Um, all right, so... Uh, what is next? This is a great question. We're in okay. the van now. You're in the van and it's just like silence. Like you're just like reeling over what happened and Ryan is checking on Lexi and she seems fine, just like out for the count. And they all just, you know, they slouch and are like, who the fuck were those guys? I offer Rusty a piece of the cheese he gave me a few days ago. I grab it and just kind of like almost in like a like one of those states where you're just like don't really know what to say at all and you're just kind of like is, is it, <laughs> just is it automatically eating it. Not totally hardened. It was in yeah. my pocket. My pockets are special. <laughs> yeah, is there time in the if pockets? Do you preserve food in your pocket? Is there time? <laughs> just time pass. There? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a timeless place. It's, I mean, it holds everything and anything. It's all at once. A little magical. And there's and it's only inanimate objects, correct? I guess we'll see. I don't know how I would <laughs> steal a live thing, but 
maybe maybe someone's pet parakeet at some point i can pop maybe there's maybe a rusty in maybe the party yes yeah. how do you do that that would just be how would i steal rusty i'll steal myself i'll just climb in <laughs> anyway uh you're all in the uh in the van just reeling after what just happened and it begins to rain and you hear the pitter pattering of the rain on the roof of the van uh both mamba and lexi out cold um and uh you arrive back at b division and once you're inside uh they take mamba and lexi to the med bay um and the evidently the doctors with the the brinks start working on them um and then uh dr rel comes back to all of you and dr sam is there too the 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 funner funner jesus the more fun one um both and, are correct are they yeah genuinely really? mm -hmm. fun oh. or fun more fun or funner oh english is dumb cool yeah. um and dr sam is like we uh found the <clears throat> schematics if you guys want to look at that more funner is incorrect though <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Thank you, Sam chance. Sam throws open the schematics that were found uh, and I'm going to change the music here is Ryan still with us? yes I turn to Ryan and I ask them so none of those were Riley? no you'll know him when you see him is Riley stronger than that? I've never fought him, but Steven and Jameson say so. That's not so good for us. That's why we got to keep training. I can tell you that encounter alone is going to make you stronger. Where are we right now again? We're in B Division. We're back We're in, in the, uh, the labs of B Division. Is there like a anything I can pocket? Um, There are... There's a very a lot of watchful eyes around at the moment. That's okay. Um, but at the table you're leaning up against, uh, <laughs> there is a, 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 a cup holder with a bunch of pens. Ooh, can I take the whole cup full of pens? Yes. Excellent. Um, and uh, Sam uh, looks down at the, uh, the, the map and says, uh, we also got a bunch of phones that Lexi seems to have found. Um, what exactly happened over there, you guys? Can I see one of those phones? Chance? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, if nothing else, we proved that we were very squishy. Okay. That's true. Um, Do the people at B Division know what happened to me yet? Um, no. Okay. Um... I, I go ahead and tell them my story. Sure. It's been a rough day. Uh, Dr. Rell is like, doesn't know how to react. She clearly doesn't deal with situations like this very well. Uh, but Dr. Sam gives you a hug. Um, and she says, uh, she says, we're going to do everything we can to stop this guy. Polly immediately just sits down and starts crying on the floor from the hug. Mm. Aww. Pent up uh, energy. Yeah. Doctor, this is a lot of adrenaline for several hours. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Sam takes the phones and she hooks them up to some device she evidently invented and it begins immediately decrypting the phones uh, and she says um, she says we should have some information from this soon so that's that's good guys that's good and the schematics are interesting Dr. Rell what do you make of this and Dr. Rell sort of peers over the schematics and it's for some machine and you just hear her muttering under her breath she goes this is very interesting I would take is that for she's sort of muttering to herself and dr sam goes this is this is normal uh and dr rell says i'm gonna need more time to look at this uh i'm not sure what this is i've never seen a machine like this before and uh sam gets through the phones and links them up to a computer and an image is stitched on the computer from several text messages it like creates uh, an image out of like a puzzle piece of, of scraps um, and it's a map and uh, the map has several locations marked uh, like pinned 
Um, and one of them is where you just were. And then Ryan points, he says, or they say, what are the, what are the other spots? And Sam says, um, the one closest to us right now is an abandoned bookstore in the Bronx. And Ryan turns to all of you and says, do you want to go? Quest activated. Visit abandoned <laughs> bookstore in Bronx. Mm -hmm. We can wait. What do you suppose we'll find there? Uh, and Dr. Rell says, maybe more of the machine. Do you think they have anything left there? Like books or like, you know, some sort of knickknacks or like anything, you know? Oh, sorry. It's not an abandoned bookstore. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That was in draft one of this session. Oh. Um, it's a record store. It's a man you think they have any store. like records left or like <laughs> any knickknacks or like some posters or anything? Ryan like that? says, Ryan says, if that gets you to go, then, then sure. Uh, let me call Will and see if he has any data on this place. Um, and Ryan steps away and presses something on the phone and starts dialing. And Dr. Sam says, by the way, um, I'm just really sorry this happened to you guys. This sounds all like a lot, so I'm, I'm sorry. Um, but your work is, you know, we're getting there. We can, we, you know, hopefully we'll solve this soon and then the killer will be off the streets and we can, you know, go back to living our, real, our normal lives. I don't think there is a normal after this. It's pretty dark, Rusty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a rat. What can I say? It's fair. <laughs> um, and uh, she says, uh, Dr. Rell says, could I join you all in this, uh, to, the, to, to the record store? Could I join you? I'd like to see, if they're building more of this machine there, I'd like to see it for myself. Yes. More targets means less attention on me. I mean, that would be great <laughs> if you came along. Uh, and Ryan gets off the phone and comes back over and says, uh, Will has security cameras evidently just around the store and there hasn't been any movement in or out in weeks. So I think we're okay. Away we go. Um, and uh, uh, Lexi, you are stabilized and you wake. Whether you'd like to join them or work on Max, like a replica Max, is up to you. Yeah, I think my initial reaction would be to ask what happened and then ask where, like, where's Max? Um, and Sam comes to you. Uh, Dr. Sam and, and Ryan come to you before everybody leaves. And uh, Ryan is like, we had to, <clears throat> we left Max behind. What? It was life or death, Lexi, we couldn't. Polly made a snap decision to save your life. And then we ran. Okay, but he's still really expensive and one of a kind. Can we check for parts? Yeah, I mean, not today, because, you know, w we just almost got killed there like an hour ago. But right. we can go back tomorrow, maybe, and yeah, see if there's anything can, there. We can keep eyes out. Um, she's yeah. just kind of wondering what happened. She's like, I have no idea what happened to me. Uh, and I would say you probably don't remember a lot of it. It feels almost like a slideshow. Yeah. Um, like things interspersed. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you just remember a ton of energy and then a bunch of light and then darkness. Yeah. And um, anger. Kid, you palpatined a guy. <laughs> what? What is that? <laughs> ah! Mamba, any input? And, dude, based on her upbringing, I don't Mamba's think she's still knocked out. Sadly. Uh, Mamba, Mamba is Mamba is starting to come to as well in an adjacent uh, uh, bed. Um, and Mamba, what, what would you like to do when you come to? I mean, not really much of anything, but also make a mark on Star Wars. Yes. <laughs> Weekly point over to Chance. That was pretty good. Thank you. Kids, am I right? Um, Ryan says, look, we're going to go take a look at this place really quickly. Um, why don't you guys rest up and we'll be back in an hour or two. You guys can also come with if you feel fit enough. Do you have a... Uh, Want to go back to my lab? <laughs> uh... Understandably, I think Dr. Sam is like, you cannot go anywhere alone right now. <laughs> um, um, but she says we can give you an, uh, an escort, like we can give you 
maybe Ryan can go with you and then the rest of the gang can go to this, this other place. Like, Isn't this think... like a science place? Can't you guys just get her set up here? And Dr. Sam goes, quite frankly, I don't really know. Yes, <laughs> I don't know what she needs. I, I actually don't think about that. Uh, yeah, and we'll say, Lexi, you and Sam have a whole conversation about this, yeah. about tools and, 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 you know, 3D printers, CNC machines, laser cutters, yeah, also, um, like, what materials you, know, you need. You're not going to have, like, the download. Like, you're not going to have the, the programming that I set up here. So, like, right. You're going to have to go back either way yeah. at some point. Um, right. So Ryan offers to take Lexi to wherever it is that Lexi needs to go. Um, and uh, they ask if uh, Mamba, if you want to join the group that's going to the record store. Yeah, she's, she's not ready to be with the group anyway right now because there was right. a lot of, like, murder. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> cough and hunch kind of over. Like, he's still process. feeling... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Go. Uh, yeah, he'll just, like... Go ahead. He's still... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. No, no, go, no, go ahead. Bobby, what are you going to say? Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, right on. Uh, so yeah, the um, the lot of you, Doctor Rell, Chance, Rusty, Polly, and Mamba are gonna go to this record store in in the Bronx, um, and then uh, Lexi and Ryan are gonna go to an undisclosed location, um, uh, Lexi's lab, we'll yeah. say. You should go uh, with your dad too. Yeah. Um so we'll we'll split real quick. Uh everybody cool for like twenty five more minutes? Sure. Yeah. Um We'll start with the group. Um you take the van northbound, uh, and uh you get dropped off at this like it's raining pretty hard by now and you're at the facade of this record store. And um, it says like, uh, Tallulah's records on the top in a, in a big red lettering. Um, but the, the like letters, one of the letters is falling off. There, none of the lights are on within the letters and all the lights in the shop are off. And it's like evening now and it's raining. So you can like hardly see in the windows without being inside. Um, and Dr. Rell's like, you guys are the experts on getting inside places like this, I think, so. Oh, I'm already picking the lock. Can I do Great. that? Uh, yeah, roll, locked? roll sleight of hand. <laughs> I don't even know. I'm just picking the lock. Don't even know if it's locked. Roll sleight of hand. Try to open the door. Just it is immediately locked. try. <laughs> okay. It is. Uh, Alrighty. Yo, that's a big, big good. That'll be uh, 20 overall. Uh. We got a little movement on one. We got nothing on two. Three's binding. Four, I'm not gonna do the whole lock picking lawyer bit, but you get mm -hmm. the idea. You pick open the door uh, and you swing it open. That one's just out, for, uh, that one's for my LPL heads out in the chat room. Um, and uh, you you enter and uh, the the sound of the rain is drowned out by the, the interior hum, uh, uh, you know, in the way that it does when it's raining just outside in a quiet space. Um, and uh, you are within this record store, and everybody enters, and you know, Doctor Rell shuts the door behind you guys. What is uh, there to pilfer? I mean, there's records everywhere. There's I vinyls. Would, I would like to pocket as many as I am allowed. It's like a big pocket. Bending them and scrunching it's them. It's a up big pocket, like... okay? <laughs> well, you could take you could take like six inch. You could take. Oh, are, there, are there CDs? No, well, there's there are small records. Oh, the yeah. like so there's LPs and EPs. Oh yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Like a little, and then okay, I see what you're saying. Don't the LPs come in the like eight eight inch maybe or nine inch? Yeah. Um. So you can definitely pocket those. I'm gonna uh, take a couple are... dozen of those. Sure. There's Just... like, there's like ten copies of uh, uh, a pressed version of Eleanor Rigby. Um, <laughs> and you just got like 10 of those. Okay. Um, and you also get... Is um, Baby Shark in there? No. On vinyl? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this place is decaying. 
That's why they were just I selling just, baby I shark. I turn around while pocketing all this. Polly, what the fuck are you talking about? Shut up. <laughs> Let's just keep talking. Um, Paul, I will remind you, Polly's sister died today. <laughs> and he's asking about baby shark. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you also get um, five copies of... Uh, uh, What's the what's the album, the Fleetwood Mac album that has the chain rumors. on it? Yeah, you got rumors. You got five copies of rumors. Um, that's a full press vinyl, but you're able to like squeeze them in there. Uh, oh, now I could squeeze them. Yeah, in. I don't know. I'll say that's what you get because otherwise you're just gonna pocket the whole store. Yeah. Um, all right. Yeah, you can just keep pocketing vinyls, however many you think is fair. I don't give a shit. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, no problem, dude. If this the makes next, you happy, the next it does fight make, just it makes me very happy. Vinyls and enemies like this. <laughs> the, the more the more things in my pocket, the more creativity I am hey, allowed. There you go. Um. All right. Uh. Can Rusty? Can you roll perception for me? It's funny that you say that because I was about to be like, I'm gonna roam the halls and like sniff and see if I yeah, notice. Yeah, it's anything. a small store. Oh, Nat one, baby. <laughs> uh, it's a record store for sure. It absolutely is. Um, you seen these records, Rusty? <laughs> wow. Well, not anymore. You're stealing them all. Yeah. Uh, Crazy. Polly, <laughs> Polly, and Mamba, could you also roll perception for me? And I'll have Doctor Rel do it soon. Chance is busy. Eighteen. I got a nine. Uh, Polly, you see. Um, you see a whiteboard uh, sort of tucked behind a shelf in the back of the store. It's a small store. It's like a very indie sort of record store where like it's like five rows of, sh you know, shelves of vinyl, uh, shelves of vinyls on both sides and then like a counter on the left uh, and then, you know, like a, a, a wall in the back with posters all across and there's a whiteboard and you're able to rummage through and pull the, the whiteboard out. Okay. Do I see anything written on the whiteboard? The whiteboard says... On the menu this week, Dino's Bar and Grill. Anybody ever heard of this place? Wait, what does it say? That's not your restaurant, Paul? It says, on the menu this week, Dino's Bar and Grill. All oh, the boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. Spread the word. You guys don't know this song. Uh, Dr. Rell looks at you kind of like, what? What? It's, it's Thin Lizzy. Maybe there's a record around here. Um, I, if you, you, you peer around, uh, and you find, uh, I think it's Jailbreak is mm -hmm. the album. Uh, you find a, a, a pressed copy of, of Jailbreak. Yeah, see? It's on this one. Like, but what's on that one? What, what was asked? Sorry. Like, what's I on grab it? What's on that? The song. Uh, the boys are back in town. What, where's that song come from? The album I'm holding. Why did you ask about it? Because it's on the whiteboard. This says a bar. It's a lyric. Meatball. You didn't say that. I just did just now. Yeah, now you did. I, I was throw asking the you, record you at him out of frustration. Just chuck it at Meatball. Uh, he, he catches it. Uh, you're able to catch it, Polly. If you want to catch it. Yeah. Um, and, you, <laughs> you know, it's a record. Uh, and... Uh, uh, Mamba, what did you roll in the perception check? That was a nine. Um, Dr. Rell is like, uh, we could play it. I think that's what you do with those things. They a record player anywhere around here? Um, I'm on the, on the... Rusty, like, running on it. Oh, What is playing? He's so cute. That's really cute. Mm. Uh, on the <laughs> countertop, there is a record player. Uh, and Dr. Rell pulls a device out of her pocket and plugs the record player into it, and it starts, uh, uh, it turns on and the lights start to flash. Um, Polly puts the record on upside down. No one knows it's upside, like, you cannot tell, but Chance, you definitely know. Mm. I just, I, do I fix it? I don't know. That's a, that's a you, that's a you decision. Polly do does the only thing he's ever seen anybody do with records and start doing this on them. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> I push him out. I push him out of the way and 
flip it over and do it correctly and yeah, try you, and get to the part of the song right, that right, has right. down you at hear, Dino's Bar and yeah, Grill. It goes like, the boys are back in town. Da -da 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 -da. Down to Dino's, into it. Down to Dino's Bar See? and Grill. Dino's Bar and Grill. You get and it now? Right as it plays, you hear... <laughs> And the floor opens up, and you guys like scamper to the side as the floor opens and <laughs> stairs uh, downwards. I turn around and just go, You're welcome. You know, it's hard to come up with puzzles in an era with phones. Um, so I was like, I don't know. How about we'll see if anyone likes Thin Lizzy? <laughs> um, yeah! <laughs> I'm glad someone knew. I'm, I'm glad Patty's back in the party because like puzzles just don't exist to Patty. He's like, it's this, duh. <laughs> that's actually true. That's <laughs> actually <laughs> genuinely true. Wait, that's so good. That is how it used to be in campaign one. We would, I would come up with the most complicated puzzles I could possibly imagine. I love and Patty puzzles. would be like, isn't it this? Yeah, and isn't it, it just it, the Fibonacci sequence? And we're like, and also, Patty's character was supposed to be the dumb character. <laughs> I can't help it. I love puzzles. <laughs> Um, I can't help it. Grum is back, baby. Uh, Let's go. Yeah, so you guys are able to go down the stairs, and we'll cut quickly to Lexi and, and Ryan. Uh, and Ryan drives you to where you specified to drive, which I assume is the main building, yes? Yes. All right, I'm going to drop the act because their characters will not know this. Right. Because um, this is table talk. Uh, but you arrive at Hargrove HQ. Um, and... Uh, uh, when uh, Ryan is like, this is where we're going? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, and they park the car, and it's just like Ryan's car. It's just like a shitty sedan. Yeah, we can go into the parking deck, and then I'll wave at the attendant. and they'll Okay, the finish. attendant comes over and is like, oh, Miss Hargrove, hi. Hello. Um, uh, which floor will you be going to today? I can get the elevator called down for you and everything. Uh, the usual, um, but I would like to see my dad as well, if you wouldn't mind calling up. Sure. Yeah, okay. Uh, and he goes, uh, uh, Friday night they'll be dressed to kill down at Dino's Bar and Grill. Yes, that is the lyric. <laughs> the drinks Thanks. will flow and blood will spill. Yeah. And if the boys want to fight, you better let them. <laughs> you better let them. <laughs> I love that song so much. That's so that's um, my, Sorry, one thing I got to, before you yeah, continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My favorite drill tweet of all time. Oh, here, I love, I have, hang on. Go ahead. Go, I can hear you. Oh, okay. It's... How are there so many songs about Christmas and only one, one song, song about the about boys, the boys being, being, back, being in town. back in town? <laughs> this is Drill's book. Amazing. Uh, if you don't own this, I cannot recommend it enough. Uh, it is just all of his tweets collected into chapters <laughs> that are based on, like, there's a whole chapter called Jeans, and it's just all of his tweets about denim jeans. <laughs> um, and uh, oh my gosh. it is... If you are a comedian and you have a moment where you don't have any inspiration, this won't give you inspiration, but it will give you a moment of laughter that will set your brain on. Uh, just flip to a random page and read two pages and you will have a black. I cannot recommend this. Enough. Hell yeah. Um, it was a birthday gift and it is the best gift I have ever received. <laughs> That's nice. wild. Uh, that tweet though, man. That's the only thing I think of when I hear the boys tweet. are back in town. How are there so many songs about Christmas? But only <laughs> one song about the boys being back in town. <laughs> Um, God, it's so good. Anyways, uh, aside over. You, uh, you get in the elevator and you go up to the lab, uh, mm -hmm. and Ryan is like, this is so weird. <laughs> um, like, are you we're like- We're literally just in Infernitex division. How is this? Because I don't, who are you? Uh, I'm, I'm, I am the heir to the Hargrove. Company, but we can keep that between us because I still don't know enough about our group to really, you know, put that information out there. If they don't recognize okay. me, there's probably a reason. It's fine. Jameson has to know who you are. Yes, he knows. Okay. Cool. I'm just gonna like sit back and let you do your thing. That's fine. When I also don't know that here... I want to. I don't know that I would like want to meet your dad. Oh, no, no, that's okay. I can leave you with somebody. You can have food or go to a lounge or something. Just let me know where you'd like to go and I can take you. I kind of kind of want to smoke a cigarette. It's been a long day. Okay, I'll take you up there then. Okay. You need a drink? Uh, and they go I up. murdered a few people. It's <laughs> been a day. 
they go up to the bar. Uh, there's like a, a an executive's bar yeah. uh, that you can take them to, and they sit down and just order like a yeah. I'll take uh, a whiskey neat. And can I smoke in here? And the guy's like, of course. Sir. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> they're like, cool. <laughs> and they just like light up and are like smoking and drinking the whiskey. And it's like a $300 bottle of whiskey. And they're like, this is really good. <laughs> and they're like, okay, bye, Lexi. <laughs> Be like, don't worry, I won't run off. That rat's um, holding the cat. It's a baby. Yeah. Whoever, she baby. She's Delightful. So squishy. Um, you go down to the lab uh, and you're working. You download the schematics and you start working, presumably. Uh, and your yeah. dad comes down. Um, and uh, I mean, I don't think we need to go into too many specifics of the conversation. It's more so okay. that she wants to provide him with like an update and say that she's okay and is she's being dragged into something dangerous. He so says, if you want to uh, expand upon that, we can. He says, um, he, he gets the gist of it and he says, uh, Lexi, my prerogative has always been to give you the freedom that you desired in any way that you felt was fair. Um, if this is something you think you need to be a part of, that can be fine, but I cannot let you do something dangerous knowingly. Uh, how do I know you'll be safe? I, so the unfortunate thing is, Unlike usual business things that I've been learning, I think that I've been unknowingly dragged into this and I'm now a target. And whether, you know, you can put as many armed people on me as you want, but they don't use standard equipment. This is like above that. Um, so she can try to explain Brink to him. I don't know if you would want to cut that off or not. Um, he so says... To describe the power and show him the bracelet and stuff. And... Um, he says, wait right here. And he goes up to his office, and he's gone for like 10 minutes. And he comes back down with a, a lockbox. And he puts it on the table and opens it. And there is like a bulky version of the bracelet inside the box. And he says, the second I caught wind of this thing being developed, I got my hands on an early one. I had a conversation with a guy. He persuaded me not to pursue the patent. This is the only copy I have. Looks like Infernatech is the company who's uh, been developing this as of late. Yeah, we're letting them do that. That's understandable. Of course, I mean, I should have known that you would have known about this somehow. We just uh, never he talked says, about it. He says, well, yeah, I was kind of hoping you wouldn't have this ability, but uh, our, our, our family's been brink sensitive for a while. What? Look, I don't have powers and none of the other extended family as far as i know it's just me and your grandfather but we don't have abilities but we are brink sensitive for sure okay. i've had meetings with jameson about this interesting did either of you know that i was brink sensitive no about what you should have I broke so many phones though yeah, you're just a weird kid. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Yeah, no problem, kiddo. <laughs> um, well, looks like if you have any men, I can give you a location if you can try to scout out and see if Max's parts are still there to get his uh, like memory and that intelligence we can do. chip. Um, they, uh, he gets the location from you, and uh, he sends a team. Uh, and he says, you know, they're not part of Infernatech or B Division, and they're able to recover a lot from okay. the... Uh, from the site and okay. uh, bring it back. And we'll cut back yeah, to the so game. Yeah, working there okay. for a while. It's yeah. It's a huge rebuild, so. Um, okay. And for the gang, um, you are now looking at uh, like something that looks to be similar to the machine that you saw in the warehouse, but like very slightly different. Um, and uh, like an adjoined piece somehow, but they're massive. These like 100 foot long pieces. Uh, and uh, Dr. Rell is just like running her fingers along. She's like, this is... What is this? And uh, as this is happening, um, she gets a call. She pulls out her phone and she says, Rusty, it's for you. And Someone she calls like, a rat? What? Someone calls a rat on the phone? Um, it's uh, it's the headquarters. I don't, I'm oh, busy. Right, of course. You're the Who only else? other person I actually know. <laughs> Um, and she puts it on speaker and like gives it to you. <laughs> uh, and there's like basically, uh, it, it's Dr. Sam on the other end. And she goes, she goes, there's been another killing. 
Where? Um, uh, she says, uh, it's in Midtown. And Same then she signal. says, we also thought of something. Polly, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. You said you hit the killer. You were in combat with the killer. Yeah, I hit him pretty good. I smashed his jaw up. It was all squishy. Yeah, on your way back, could you stop by my place and drop off the brass knuckles? Okay. I just yeah. realized I could do some DNA analysis on that. What's that? Deoxyribonucleic <laughs> acid? No? All right, that's fine. I'm not going to explain it. Just I need the blood on the brass knuckles. Yeah, you got it, Chief. Good Danny, man. I love how quick you are to be stupid. <sighs> It just comes naturally, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, that is where we're going to end episode three of campaign three of Speedrunners and Dragons. <laughs> okay. Pogaroonies, gamers, nice work. One. That was what? a bloody one. What was it again? Let's see. I'm going to pull up. I think it's Ah, uh, yes. Poggerton Wagerton. I yes, I sent, I sent Patrick a DM today that said Poggerton Wagerton, and he said, I quit. <laughs> <laughs> yep. uh, fair i think Man. shout outs to danny for completing the secret assignment as well high five wherever you are on the display yeah right here nice uh yeah how many raise your hand if you completed the secret assignment today barely got it in there <laughs> all right say don't it. say anything more don't say anything oh, more don't say it uh we're gonna do more of them in later episodes uh i just thought of that right before we started and i thought that might be fun uh, Bobby, <laughs> I'm disappointed. Oh no! <laughs> oh, um, this advantage next to you. Disappointed. <laughs> okay, Bobby was the only one who like fainted, died in this episode. Right, that's so. right, that's right, that's right. So it's um, yeah, it's just punishment for that. Poggingston Poggingsworth, nice, nice. That's <laughs> ultra cursed. Um, <laughs> let's do plugs real quick. Let's make it. Let, let's do that real quick. Bobby, you're first. Hey, I'm Bobby, also known as the Black Tastic. I'm gonna be at Summer Games Done Quick doing gaming charity stuff with a whole bunch of people featured in this call. So basically uh, over list. Yeah, we're gonna be uh, here Tuesday and Saturday for both Mega Man and Bloodstained Curse of the Moon, respectively. You'll be seeing me in interview spots as well. I'll probably be interview. Yeah, I was approached to do like an interview and stuff, so that'd be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll be we'll be doing taking it easy throughout the rest of the week, doing a lot of casual stuff, a lot of fighting games. Uh, up, up until then, so feel free to come through and follow. Sweet, Patty. Nightly streams every night on the night at the Patty channel. Come hang out and watch the stream that happens every night at night on the night <laughs> on the night that is nighttime. Nice. Uh... No, 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 night. Kung Fu Fruit Cup. Hello! I'll be doing some of these set interviews at Summer Games Done Quick. No way! With no this way. guy right here! That's me! Yay! Wow! Um, yeah, wow! It's gonna be great. So, yeah, I'll be there all next week. Um, otherwise, I finally finished Persona 3 the other night. Hey! It was okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have opinions. Music, fantastic. Um, but uh, I'm working on just replaying Paper Mario because I love it. Um, nice. Got some new games coming out. I'll be playing like the Somnium File sequel and some stuff like that. So I like puzzle games and Nintendo stuff. And me, I do. Word. Dangers. Yeah, SGDQ right around the corner. Very exciting. Um, I'm not volunteering and I don't have a run, but you will see me do some commentary for some runs that I'm pretty, pretty well known for, namely Super Mario Odyssey and Kirby. That's what I do on the channel. Um, Mario speedruns primarily kind of dipping into some like retro stuff as well lately like we're we're trying to do just some casual Mario games because we've not really done that on stream even though I'm like kind of a massive Mario nerd so we're kind of picking those through we did lost levels last weekend so that was kind of fun um, but also speaking of GDQ there's a hotfix show literally tonight in three hours that I'm going to be on uh, and you'll be on, on another one. Slash one. Games done quick. that's right I will be <laughs> I'm just hotfix shows all over the place but there is one right tonight um it's called Community Spotlight, so you're going to be seeing me do Kirby in the Forgotten Land with Mr. Shasta in commentary. Um, so, yeah, in three hours, you'll have another place to go, I suppose. Cool. Uh, Danny? You'll never guess what game I've been playing recently. It's Zelda Ocarina of Time. No Whoa. way, dude. It's amazing. Uh, been running some all dungeons lately, trying to get back into it. Took like a month off of stream. Life was really busy, but uh, I'm back now, trying to get back to my normal schedule. Uh, and I also just recently started playing Trackmania for the first time ever. So my life is over. 
Uh, I'm just going to be doing that forever. Um, it's super fun. Yes. So I've heard. That's how it works. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I, I have been putting it off for a while because I knew that's what would happen. But uh, yeah, so when when there's no time for OOT, I'll be doing some Trackmania stuff. For, cool. It's been so really fun. There's uh, always time for OOT. Oh yeah, baby. Um, on my side of things, uh, with SGDQ next week, I'm also interviewing people and doing the pre-show. I'm also running on Wednesday. If you want to see Pokemon Emerald, I'm um, doing that. Um, but uh, also my play is coming up next month. So I am am working so much oh, you're in over play? the coming days. Yeah, there's a play in Los Angeles. If you want to come July 14th and 15th in North Hollywood, more details to come on Twitter if you want to come. I'll see you there, um, man. Thanks, dude. Uh, but yeah, uh, so I'm really busy. So streams are going to be all over the place in the coming week. Uh, but I'll, you can guarantee I'll be playing Survival Ironmon, which is the new... Iron Mon version released by Pi. It is really fun and right up my alley and excellent stream content. Uh, I've been doing, I've done like 100 attempts so far. It's a lot of fun. Just check it out. Uh, so I'll be doing that whenever I can stream, which will be random times, sometimes in the middle of the night. It's just what it is. Uh, but thank you so much, everybody, for watching. We're going to cut the, uh, we're going to cut the YouTube here. YouTubers, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and like the video and comment what you thought. Uh, and we'll see you on Twitch sometime, maybe. Do it. Check you later.